training program with um, our uh, speaker from the CHED. No? So Dr. Lena was with us yesterday during our opening program. And there were some faculty pre presenters uh, yesterday. Uh, there were actually three, uh, two paper presenters yesterday. And uh, the, the paper were in the fields of education and social science. No? So today we are very happy because we have papers in the category of nursing and healthcare. And uh, to start our uh, program today, our presentation today, we would like to request everybody to please stand for the prayer. Shall we pray? Shall we bow down our heads? As we bow down our heads, our loving and uh, mighty Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your goodness in our lives and in our profession and even in our university. We thank you for all your professions. We thank you for the successful opening program uh, yesterday of our Research and Development Week. We thank you for all our presenters. We also commit to you our presenters today. We pray for wisdom and strength that you will give them as uh, they, pre they present to us the findings of their study. We also pray for all others who have the part in the program. We pray that you will prepare them and we also pray for our old gen so that they will be receptive and they will be uh, helpful uh, and cooperative in uh, giving suggestions to improve our researches. We pray that you will bless us uh, and um, uh, bless uh, our day today so that it will be fruitful and it all will be down to your honor and glory. So we just commit to you everything. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and please be seated. <clears throat> just a few reminders uh, well, which we could consider as uh, rules in our presentation. So like um, what we did in the past, it, there will be a 30-minute uh, presentation and the actual presentation will be 20 minutes so when uh, the the 20 minute is about to end uh, you will if you have uh, the last five minutes uh, somebody will give this signal to the presenter no that means you are given um, five more minutes no in your presentation so when you see this signal this means your time is up and you have already consumed your 20 minutes which means that you are now ready for the 10 minute question and answer portion. Okay, so 20 minutes actual, 10 minutes uh, question and answer part. Okay, is it clear? All right. This is not a contest, so. <laughs> this is not a contest, so don't worry so much, okay? But we will be strict of time, no? Because uh, we, we, we started already late because of some uh, problems with uh, the MC and all others. Okay, so since you have no more questions, we, are, we gladly welcome our students, uh, lovers of research. We also welcome Dr. West with us. Shall we give a big, big hand to all of us, to Dr. West for being with us? Um, Yes, and of course, some of our heads are also with us. Um, Dr. Burlungan, Dr. Porras, uh, Dr. Um, Pulikyo is also with us. Thank you for your presence. Some of the faculty members, of course, of the College of Nursing who are not presenters but are with us today. Thank you for your presence, okay? So, uh, I will not announce any more or read the paper because you have your program with you, but we will start with the presentation uh, by Professor uh, Joy Larrio. No, so Mam Rio will be the first presenter, then uh, the, it will be unannounced. No? Just see the program, and then uh, we will just hear the, and see the presentations, okay? So shall we have our first presenter? Shall we give a big, big hand to our first presenter? Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are happy to uh, present to you the fi our findings or the result of our study using uh, Q methodology. Together with me are Mom Cello, uh, Lian, and uh, Mom Sally uh, Melba. And uh, I will not be uh, presenting alone uh, our study, but rather uh, the three of us, we divided the topic, the three of us. So the three of us will be presenting our study. Uh, hope uh, that our findings will uh, give you insight as to what is Kabalaka and why Kabalaka is continually, uh, what is this, uh, the preference of women uh, around the CPU, around the community, uh, around the community uh, near CPU and uh, other uh, communities in the city of Iloilo and even other municipalities in the province of Iloilo. Uh, may I request my colleagues to be here with me to present our study. Thank you. Good morning. So we would like to present to you our study entitled Factors Influencing Preference of Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center as Family Planning Service Provider Application of Q Methodology. Family planning is mandated as a priority public health program. So in 2013, an estimated 289,000 women died during pregnancy and childbirth. So World Health Organization considered family planning as an important program to solve the problem on the increase of maternal deaths. Family planning was part of the Millennium Development Goal that ended in 2019. And to sustain the integration of family planning, it was still included as a component of the SDG or the Sustainable Development Goal. Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center is an outreach arm of the College of Nursing and it has been providing reproductive health services from 1972 up to the present. And it was a recipient of John Hopkins Program for International Education, Gynecology and Obstetrics for five years from 1993 to 1998. And Kabalaka is a DOH accredit accredited family planning service provider from 1998 up to the present. Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center serves the population in communities adjacent to Central Philippine University. It also serves women from other uh, municipalities as far as from Lambunao and other provinces like Guimaras. Despite the availability of free family planning health services in rural health units, Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center clients still patronize the center's services. This study aimed to answer the following questions. What are your reasons for choosing Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center as your pl family planning service provider? And second, how important are these reasons to you? significance of our study, the results of this study will be beneficial to Kabalaka Reproductive Health Centers and its various stakeholders, such as the family planning clients, Central Philippine University, and Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center, 
other government and other non-government organizations and also researchers and educators. The Q method was utilized in this study. This Q method permits the systematic study of subjectivity and communicability of subjective perceptions. Central to this method is the participant's point of view and understanding. The Q method has five phases. The first phase of the Q method is the coll collection of Kuhn cores or Q samples. The source of our Q samples is the personal perspective of uh, or viewpoints of our clients. So it's considered as a primary source. There are three major types of Q samples, naturalistic, ready-made, and quasi-naturalistic. In our study, the type of Q sample is naturalistic because the source of our Q samples was the opinion of the participants. The second phase of the Q method is the selection and compiling of sample, of sample representative. In our study, we have unstructured. The purpose of using unstructured Q sample is to ensure wider coverage of possible sub-issues that are relevant to the topic. So on the average of 60 to 70 Q samples, it could be an ideal number as registered. In our study, we have 65 of Q samples or Q, state or Q statements. The third phase is the selection of participants. These participants are referred to as the person sample, and they were purposely selected for diversity. The fourth phase of the Q method is the formal comparison of arranged Q samples by factorial analysis with the use of the PQ method, wherein data, data inputs automatic generation of the initial by person matrix, factor extraction, rotation is estimation. Then the functional relatedness of the statements were noted. The fifth phase of the Q method is the analysis of the results. The results of the factor anal analysis were analyzed through assessment of factor scores, cons consensus of factor scores, interpretation of factor array, and the use of the Varimax factor extraction and rotation. Professor Rio will now present to us how we apply Q methodology in our data collection and processing. Next slide. Okay, what we did, uh, if you have heard uh, Kabalaka started in 1972 up to the present, so uh, you can just imagine how many uh, clients Kabalaka was able to serve since 1972. But in our study, uh, we did not consider all these uh, uh, clients because some of these clients are already too old. They are not uh, any more uh, of uh, reproductive age. So we decided to only consider those who were availing the Kabalaka services uh, from nine, uh, 2010 to 2016. Okay, there were hundreds, more than a hundred uh, active clients of Kabalaka. It's uh, more or less more than 120. However, in this study, we also consider uh, distance availability of uh, the clients. So we group the clients uh, based on their uh, addresses. So we group those who are living only nearby the, the university and also those uh, living as far as Santa Barbara and uh, Lambunao and also other uh, communities in the city like uh, Barrio Obrero and uh, other parts of the city. So we group them and uh, we randomly uh, select our participants and we come up, we come up to 120. However, 
uh, in the process we we choose 10 then uh, random we, cho we randomly choose 10 out of this 120 to be our first uh, what is this uh, participants wherein we can uh, utilize to formulate our Q sorts. So we choose 10 randomly. And uh, from these 10, we recorded our interview the, using the question uh, mentioned earlier, the two questions, why they prefer Kabalaka and uh, and then we we collected the, we transcribed this interview, we transcribed this uh, interview and then try to see commonalities of responses and try to delete those who are redundant and we were able to come up to 65 uh, Q statements. And these Q statements were, because this is, or this was uh, in our local language, so we have to uh, have it translated to English and translate it back to uh, Hiligaynon. If the statement, uh, the statement will come out uh, the same. And then later, we try to make or type it one by one, all the 65 Q statement, we, we type it and cut it into pieces, paste it in a cardboard, and then we made a box. We made 11 boxes. What, what are these boxes? These boxes is, was used uh, for the participants to place their, uh, what is this? <laughs> to place their responses according to how they rated the Q statements. So we have this 11 box. Uh, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, we, we really uh, label it that way, then 0 for neutral, and then positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, positive 5. Uh, this is how they show their agreement or disagreement to the Q statement that we have gathered from the 10 participants uh, that we have uh, initially interviewed. So it's just like a game. Then later, because when they are doing this, we are also uh, somewhere just uh, in the room and then we we allow them freely to you know to place their their uh, preferences no, in the specific box after which we try to note it down in their in their interview schedule the responses whether they place it in negative three or positive 3 or positive 5 or positive 3. Then after which we uh, try to again uh, note down the commonalities of these responses and uh, analyze it as mentioned through your through the PQ uh, Barimax uh, rotation and we were able to come up to uh, four major uh, factors that uh, that the participants uh, uh, consider as the reason of their preference of uh, Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center. Good morning. So four factors were revealed after the analysis of the Q sorts. 
These factors influence the preference of Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center as service provider. These are factor one, care experience. Factor two is care support. Factor three is care process. And factor four is care providers. Factor one, which is care experience, comprises of caring attitude of personnel as perceived by the clients, in which the participants shared, nakasaho ako kay manami akong experience sa batasan sang service provider. Under the incorporation of other healthcare services, the participants stated, hindi lang party sa family planning ang ako natunan, diri kundi iban pa nga pagbulong sa sakit naton nga mga babayi under physical cleanliness and timeliness of care the participants verbalized cleanliness ang importante kag ginaasikaso ako dayon malimpyo kag matawhay factor 2 is care support Care support encompasses monitoring, counseling options of family planning, availability of supplies, and other services. Under monitoring, counseling options of family planning, the participants stated, Ginapaintindi ako sang lain-lain nga family planning methods kagkong may side effect. Kada gid injection, ginapamangkot kung ano ang akong ginabatsyag. Under availability of supplies, the participants verbalized, maskin layo, okay lang kay sigurado ako nga may available nga supplies. Under other services, they shared, hindi lang family planning ako na avail, may pop spear pa kag tuli. Factor three is care process, which is the timeliness of care in which these statements were shared by the participants. Okay lang, lipot lang a time ang nagamit ko sa pag-avail sang serbisyo, mahapus ang mga transaksyon, madasig ang serbisyo. Factor four is care providers. This refer to the physicians and nurses who render care in Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center. So these are the statements from the participants. Ang doctor kag nurse mabuot kag maayo magdeliver sang serbisyo. Manami kay ang mga doctors taga IMH, may saligid ako. Kampanti ako kay si ma'am taga College of Nursing. Lastly, maayo ang batasan sa mga personnel kag, mga, kag may ethics. Based on the results of the study, the following recommendations are forwarded. For Central Philippine University, the university should maintain and continue to support the operation of KRHC since this is the major outreach arm of both the College of Nursing and the university. It is also recommended that the university invest and procure up-to-date equipment relevant to reproductive health for the center to maintain its DOH accreditation as reproductive health service provider. For Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center, the center should sustain its programs and family planning services. Service providers should continue to upgrade themselves through staff development and skills enhancement activities. They should keep abreast with what is current and relevant in the provision of family planning services. Through this, safe and quality care is achieved. An aggressive information dissemination program regarding the services of KRHC is also recommended. Through this, more women are reached and empowered to make informed decisions regarding their reproductive health. The College of Nursing should continue the RLE exposure of the students in Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center because of the unique training experiences that the center provides that help strengthen the students' clinical skills. Lastly, a percentage of the outreach fee of the, college, of the students of the College of Nursing could be directed and allocated for the daily operational expenses of the center. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the chance to share our findings. So,
we would like to request our presenters to please stay on stage because we have now the uh, most important part, one of the most important part of the presentation, which is the question and answer portion. Um, we would like to congratulate this group no, for uh, highlighting the use of Q methodology no, in research. All right? So maybe uh, we, we are now, inter we would like to entertain questions now from our um, students, from our teachers, other heads are with us. Um, please identify your, uh, tell us your name, the college where you come from before you give your question. Okay? Anybody would like to give the first question? Anybody? All right. Um, sige, I'll give the first question, no? Because uh, maybe you are still trying to finalize it, no? Um, this is um, this is a phenomenology, right? This is a phenom study. It's not. It's a It's a Q method, all right. So this is a quanti qualitative study, but utilizes the Q methodology, all right. So it's different from other method, others, other studies um, uh, that will be presented afterwards that made use of uh, phenomenology, all right. Could you please tell us uh, 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 about this, very uh, briefly about this methodology. And why did you use this in your study? Uh, actually, why we use it in our study? Because we believe that this is the most appropriate, uh, reliable uh, method to determine the preferences of uh, Kabalaka clients, why they continually patronize the services of Kabalaka. Uh, why it is reliable? Because the Q statements that we use in the study was also from the mouth of the clients. So in other words, uh, the questions or the Q statement that was formulated also came from those 10 clients that we initially interviewed and for our 50 participants it's just that they what they did is only to agree or disagree to what uh, we had got what we had gathered uh, from the 10 uh, clients that we initially uh, uh, interviewed so the responses of these uh, 50 participants in our study simply concretized the Q statement that was shared by the initial 10 uh, participants whom we interviewed to gather these Q statements. So we, we could say that it's um, somehow the statements that you included in your instruments were from the participants themselves all right so more or less it's uh, reliable no in the sense that they came from the participants themselves no okay yes uh, madam you have something to ask good morning thank you for the presentation i would like to ask about the title and the conclusion of the study the factors the title says factors influencing preferences so may i know what are the factors that influence the preferences of the clients uh, good morning, ma'am. So the study revealed uh, four factors after the analysis of the Q sorts 
these factors are care experience, care support, care process, and care providers. These are the preferences or these are the factors that influence the preferences? Which of these? Are these the factors or, uh, that influence their preferences or are these the preferences? Uh, this is, ma'am, the factors that uh, influence the preferences of the client based on their statements and their cue sort. Okay. So these are considered to be the factors that influence their preference why they have chosen Kabalaka. So that means, uh, would, would you say that these factors are identified by the respondents themselves, right? Yes. It's not the researchers who made a statistical test uh, testing which of these influence the choice of the clients for Kabalaka services. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That is why the type of Q methodology that we utilized is naturalistic because the Q sorts coming from the 10 participants was the instrument of the study answered by 50 respond participants thank you so thank you for that question uh, so in the framing of the the instrument the, you choose 10 first you have yes, chosen sir. 10 first and then out of those um, outputs statements. from the 10 you made use you finalize your your questionnaire yes, your sir. material your instrument and then you use that in the final study using now the 50 respondents yes sir okay. Thank you. right are there questions from our very clear now are there questions from our students you do not like to question your professor <laughs> how about from uh, our uh, all right so none so far it's very clear now no questions all right, it's very clear. No, so I could see you nodding your heads. All right. So to shall we give them a big, big hand? Right. Congratulations, no, for introducing to us Q methodology. All right. So to concretize our saying of thank you to our presenters, we would like to request our director of our. You just stand there, ma'am. We would like to request our director, uh, Dr. Penetrante, to. Uh, award the certificate of recognition with the note that your token will be given on Friday, not during our closing ceremony. Okay. Friday, this coming Friday. Right, so I would like to read the content of the certificate. Certificate of recognition. Read Certificate of Re Central Philippine University, Haralu City, Philippines. Certificate of Recognition is awarded to our three presenters. In grateful recognition for presenting their paper entitled Factors Influencing Preference of Clients of Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center as Family Planning Service Provider Application of Q Methodology. Um, during the 20th Faculty Research Symposium with the theme, Quality Research, Pathway Towards Development and Progress, held at the Educational Media Center, Central Philippine University. Therefore, always abounding in the work, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And given this 12th day of March, 2019 at Central Philippine University, Haro City, Philippines, signed Dr. Penetrante, Director of the University Research Center, Dr. Irving Ruk Domingo L. Rio, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and our beloved President, Dr. Chidoro C. Robles. Okay? So I would like to request our Director to award this certificate. 
for Professor Rio. And that one, okay. Okay. Oh. Right, so for the picture taking, please. Okay. Shall we give them a big, big hand once more? Thank you. All right. So we will go now to our next presenter. All right. So I would like to request uh, Professor Buteros and the group no, for our second uh, research presentation. Good morning. This is a phenomenological study on infant care among teenage mother. I am Julieta Buteros and my partner is Mam Novi Joy Solidad. The purpose and objective of the presentation to examine and understand infant care experience of teenage mothers who are taking care of their baby from birth up to one year. Introduction. Data revealed, this is in 2014, that every hour, 24 babies are delivered by teenage mothers. Around 14% of the Filipino, child, Filipino girls aged 15 to 19 are either pregnant or having their babies for the second time. More than the rate, uh, more, more than twice the rate in 2002. Among other major countries in Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the Philippines has the highest rate of teenage pregnancy and is the only country that has an increasing rate. According to a conversation with an OB, she attested that she had an increase in the client who are teenagers. In a certain hospital, as in 2013, 41, deliver, deli 41 teenagers delivered with two beings pregnant for the second time. On 2015, there were 31 deliveries for pregnant teenagers, two being mothers for the, two being pregnant for the second time. In 2016, however, there was a decrease since there were two other private hospitals that opened and there are other obstetricians. Next slide, please. Research problem or question, what is it like to care for an infant as a teenage mother? Methodology, this is a descriptive phenomenology. The sampling is purposive. Eight teenagers serve as the research participants. However, seven only were included in the analysis because the researchers felt this is the saturation point. These participants came from diverse educational, socioeconomic, and geopolitical background. This study included only mothers who were 15 to 19 and are the primary caregivers of their children from zero up to 12 months at the time of the interview. This study included only teenagers, teenage mothers who delivered term babies without any congenital defects regardless of the method of the delivery. The method of the delivery means either cesarean or normal. Ethical consideration, we have the informed consent. Data collection is in that interview and return interview. Data analysis is the Hitzner method. The searcher upon initial contact 
establish rapport with the respondents to gain their sense of trust and to determine if they were ready for the interview. Verbal consent were sought from the participants prior to the actual interview. Written informed consent were also secured the, before the commencement of the interview. They were informed of the purpose, style, and procedure of the research as well as the rights as research participants. We started with the question, pwede mo ma-share sa amon ang IMO experience sa pag-atipan sa IMO bata? And then we followed it with, pwede mo kami mahatagan sample sa IMO nga ginaubra? Okay. Interview, interviews with teenage mothers were recorded in a digital recorder. The researchers transcribed the interview using the Hitchner method. The researchers continued to interview until the response is repetitive. They examined their, sub they examined their subjectivity by bracketing as to how teenager, teenage mothers care for their infant. The interview was reviewed by listening again to the recorded interview as a whole. Units of general meaning were delineated and units of meaning relevant to the research questions were also delineated. Answers irrelevant to the topic about infant care as well as redundancies were omitted. The units of the same meaning Related to infant care experience were clustered. Determination of themes were derived from the clusters of meaning. A summary was written for its individual interviews and checked with the participants. So we have to go back and ask them. Summaries were modified need as needed, so with the themes. General and unique themes were identified and contextualized and the researchers wrote a composite summary. Okay. At my analysis, we have uh, arrived to four major themes, adapting to infant care routines. Number two is facing challenges in infant care. Three is adjusting to become a teenage mother, and the feeling of fulfillment of motherhood experiences. Uh, the themes will be discussed by Professor Solidad. Good morning. Next slide, please. Okay. So one of the themes is adapting to infant care routines. Uh, we have the categories for adapting to infant care routines as caring for the infant, which has a subcategory of cuddling. So the our respondents would... Uh, tell us nga ginalanla nila ila baby. So, nutrition, breastfeeding, hygiene, immunization, caring during illness, and health need of an infant. So, some of the uh, lines of our, of our respondents are ginahulid gid per me and ako gid ang nagapaligo sa iya. So, it is under the category for caring for the infant. For the experiencing support from significant others, we have the subcategories of support from boyfriend or partner and family, mother, father, siblings, and previous experiences in child rearing. So our, our respondents would state that nagtuon ako alaga kay may manghod ako nga ginabantayan sang una. So next slide, please. So our next theme is facing challenges in infant care. Under the facing challenges in infant care, we have the category of feeling of inadequacy, in which the subcategories are mother solely uh, responsible for infant care. So our clients, our respondents would uh, quote, Ako gid ang nag-alaga sa iya. We also have the breastfeeding practices. They have stopped schooling, the household chores. They also have conflicts with uh, parents or siblings, wherein they stated, 
kung hindi ako magpati kay nanay ko. They are also not confident in infant care and they have difficulty in doing infant care or they have regrets for not doing good in infant care. They also have regrets of becoming a mother at an early age. So this is another category that uh, regretting the early motherhood experience or the feeling of regrets. Another category for facing challenges in infant care is the desire for personal improvement, uh, which has subcategories of maternal needs of the infant and wishes to provide well for the infant and the future. So the, the respondent would quote, nga gusto ko man, tani, nga ihatag ko sa iya, kung ano man ang nakitaan ko nga may ara ang iban nga bata. Another category is managing time. So, the subcategories for that is your time constraints, time management between infant care and household chores, and the time management between infant care and studies. So, our respondents would uh, quote, Kabudlay kay ako pa ang gatig ang kagapang laba. And, Kabudlay kay ga-eskwela pa ako kun aga, kagun gabi ginamasakit pa siya. Next slide, please. Another theme is adjusting to become a teenage mother. So for these categories are embracing the maternal role, which has the subcategories of readiness of becoming a mother, and sense of responsibility, and desires for the future of the infant. So the respondents would quote, Gusto ko man nga hindi niya maagyan ang naagyan ko. Another category for adjusting to become a teenage mother is experiencing support. So it has, they have assistance in infant care. So they would quote, Ara man si mama nga mabulig sa amon. Another category for adjusting to become a teenage mother is recognizing personal needs. It has uh, subcategories that uh, of health teaching, education from family and health care. So there are respondents would quote, Ginatudluan man ako ni Lola. And also maintenance of health of the teenage mother. So the last category for adjusting to become a teenage mother is experiencing deprivation. So that is deprivation of social life, time for self, and lack of sleep. So one of the respondents uh, quoted that kung magkadtudi ang akon mga miga sa balay kag maghagad, hindi ako ka asi asi opod lagaw. And one more thing is kabudlay kay Natuyo ako, may klase pa ko pagkaaga, tapos kung gabi, ga, take care pa ako, kag kun, mabudlay pa kung siya nagamasakit. Okay, last of our theme is the feeling of fulfillment of motherhood experience. So, we have the category of feeling happy and fulfilled. For the subcategories, there is satisfaction and fulfillment in seeing the infant grow up. Our respondents would quote, Happy gid ako nga kada puli ko, makita ko siya kag nasadyahan gid siya nga makita man ako. Okay. For our conclusion, Teenage mothers need a lot of help from parents, significant others, and their partners. Number two, they also need psychological and social help on top of financial and material need of both the teenager and their child. And the third, these girls verbalize they don't recommend early pregnancy and motherhood after difficulties and hindrances they encountered. So for our recommendations, parents and significant others have a great role in preventing teenage pregnancy. So an open communication 
is uh, suggested to both the parents and uh, the children. The parents should know their friends and uh, to see to it because there is really peer pressure within. Number two, health providers should include family planning in their mother's class to, for, to prevent further unplanned pregnancy. Number three, advocacy for evidence-based programs to support teenage mothers should be encouraged because they really need financial support for their laboratories and their ultrasounds. Number four, adolescents should be taught sexuality at school and the responsibility that goes with it. Number five, encourage young mothers to return to school and continue healthy lifestyle. And lastly, to encourage young pregnant women to get appropriate health care intervention. That's all. Thank you. So the study is entitled A Phenomenological Study of Infant Care Among Teenage Mothers. Okay? So, um, let's see. Uh, Dear students, you are excused to ask questions to your professors today. Uh, so you are excused. All right, shall we have the first question? Yes, um, Dr. Policchio. Good morning. Um, the uh, ma Madam, kindly identify yourself and the college or the department uh, you came from. Good morning once again. I'm yes. Dr. Polecchio from the Guidance Services Center. Since you were dealing with teenage mothers, were they already over 18 when you interviewed them? Or still, or did you have to deal with um, mothers under 18 at the time that you did your study? Uh, our participants are 15 to 19 years old at the time of the interview with their, infa with their children 0 to 12 months old only. So for ethical concerns, how did you deal with uh, these teenage mothers under 18? Uh, before we, we did the actual interview, uh, actually, we contacted them by phone, and maybe the second time that we contacted them and they, ag they agreed, so we set a date for the interview. So there were, they have guardians with them, except for one, who is totally not living with the parents, and she's the youngest. So meaning they had their guardians with them when you did the interview? They had their guardians. So was but, it... Uh, uh, during the interview, we noticed that they cannot talk so well with the guardian, with the parents or the grandparents. So we asked permission if we can talk with them alone. Okay. Because, yeah, we understand that if they are under 18, guardians also should give consent. Okay, so I just needed they to be did. clarified on that. Yeah. Because we have called a lot, uh, asking a lot of permission, and so many rejected because uh, mama will not allow, papa will not allow, grandma will not allow. So only those. And you have documented, ma'am, your, no, no, your permission for ethical considerations. Yeah. Okay, so for ethical considerations, permission our permission from guardians were uh, secured, okay? Are there more questions about teenage uh, pregnancy? Our teenagers who are with us, you have questions? No more teenagers. So there are two, no? Actually, there are two uh, important uh, considerations on, of this study. You know, one is these are teenage mothers who are having infant 
So they have also to deal with infant care. No? So pregnant, they have been pregnant at the time of their, uh, their they are being t teenagers during the time of pregnancy and they are dealing with infant care. No? You see, quite challenging, very challenging. No? <laughs> All right, are there questions? More questions from our students? You'll be given additional points if you have questions. Uh, their students, oh, your professor said yes. If you have some questions, you'll be given additional points in your recitation. Okay, is there anybody who would like to dare their professors? So, in other words, very clear, no? Very clear. The presentation was very clear that you have no questions, or it's the other way around. No? <laughs> right, so very clear, no? Very clear. Because uh, probably uh, it's a very uh, interesting topic that you don't want to ask questions anymore. Okay? All right, so again, to show our appreciation to our presenters, I would like to request our director. Dr. Penetrante, to please uh, come up stage to award our certificate of appreciation to our presenters. So we have two presenters today. Professor, uh, I mean in the second uh, uh, research that we, ha that we have uh, just heard, uh, Professor Boteros and Professor Soledad. Okay, so <laughs> Madam... Uh, all right, so again, uh, the citation of the certificate is the same, and this time the title of the study is A Phenomenological Study on Infant Care Among Teenage Mothers During the um, 20th Faculty Research Symposium at Central Philippine University. Signed by our director, Dr. Penetrante, uh, BPAA, Dr. Rio, and our, our president, Dr. Chidoro Sirobles. Okay? Thank you very much. And the token will be given on Friday. Okay, shall we give them a big, big hand once more? Thank you, professors. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now we go to our... Third, no, your snacks uh, have been served, so we need to... You have some concerns, uh, Dr. West? You have some concerns? None? Okay. So we will now go to our third presentation. You have your snacks with you, so there is no need for us to have our snack break. No? We will proceed with our third presenter this time. It's about the lived clinical experiences of nursing students assigned in intensive care unit how it is to be in the ICU, no? All right. All right. So I would like to request now our presenters to please come up the stage. We have seats here for you while the others, uh, while, while one is presenting, we have uh, seats for the two other presenters. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the College of Nursing, I am very pleased to present to you our research study entitled, Leave Clinical Experience of Nursing Students Assigned in Intensive Care Unit. With my co-researchers, Professor Laxon and Professor Sata. For the introduction, I will give the floor to Professor Laxon. Good morning. Clinical learning environment is one of the most valuable components of a nursing program. Unique learning opportunity in which classroom theory and skills are put to the test with real life situations. Geared towards developing the sense of responsibility, assignment into clinical environments that are perceived as unfamiliar 
and complex and that require dealings with diverse human relations. Clinical practice is the larger part of education among nursing students. Many qualitative studies within the past five years reported a variety of factors contributing to stress and anxiety in undergraduate nursing students in the clinical learning environment. So the most common factors include the first clinical experience, fear of making mistakes, performing clinical skills, faculty evaluation, lack of support by nursing personnel, and the theory gap. It is this heightened sense of anxiety that deserves attention and intervention so students can apply their knowledge skillfully in an environment that is supportive and conducive to learning, which will facilitate success and increase retention. As intensive care patients require more complex or acute nursing care, clinical practicum is an intensive care in an intensive care unit is valuable for nursing students. This allows students to apply wide area of skills and can observe interdisciplinary teamwork and decision making. Clinical practicum and intensive care unit develops clinical reasoning by organizing information. However, students may have different experiences during their clinical practicum. There is limited research on educational experiences of students in critical care units and the undergraduate level and the effectiveness of such experiences in increasing basic knowledge and skills. Our objectives, uh, the objectives of the study, the purpose of the study was to understand the lived clinical experiences of student nurse as nurses assigned in an intensive care unit and to examine the nature of the clinical experience of student nurses and the essence of such experience. Our research problem, what are the lived clinical experiences of student nurses assigned in intensive care unit and what are the essences of the clinical experience of the student nurse in an intensive care unit. For the methodology, this study employed a descriptive phenomenology design with five participants until we have reached the saturation point. Ethical consideration was given, like an informed consent was observed by getting informed consent of the participant in ass and assuring them of the confidentiality of the study. The data collection was done during in-depth interview and return interview for the validation of the study findings. We use Hickner steps for our data analysis. The study was conducted on the hospital in Iliilo where the respondents were affiliated and assigned in the ICU at the time of the study. Intensive care units cater to patients with severe and life-threatening illnesses and injuries, which require constant close monitoring and support from specialist equipment and medications in order to ensure normal bodily functions. For the results of the study, we come up with three major themes, namely feelings toward the environment, perception of the experience, and knowledge and skills enhancement. The participant verbalized one of the sub-theme, nervousness. She said, I was really nervous because, of course, when I walk into the ICU, the first thing you see are the patients who are acutely ill, and you see many tubings attached to them. The next major theme is the perception of the experience. With the sub-theme, awareness of differences. The participant said, it doesn't compare or no other rotation compared to what 
I learned in the ICU. Cause in the ICU, you have taught almost full control of your patient. One on one, and you really get to know your patient in depth and really get to go throughout all of his records because you have to be careful because your patient near to dying and should be really alert for any untoward signs and symptoms. And lastly, for the knowledge and skills enhancement as the major theme with a sub-theme of new learning. The participant said, if I am assigned in the ICU, I can see many stuff. It's new for me to see patients attached to many tubes. That's why we were oriented by our clinical instructor. In the ward, there are machines that cannot be seen as compared in the ICU. For the essence of the experience, we have come up uh, three, provide new learning, feel confident with their abilities, and competent to take care of the patient. For the conclusions. Okay, good morning. For the conclusions of our study, the major themes of the live clinical experiences of nursing students assigned in intensive care unit included feeling towards the environment, perception of the experience and knowledge and skills enhancement. The live clinical experience of nursing students in ICU provided new learnings, made them feel confident with their abilities and competent to take care of the patient. However, this study is only true to the participants themselves who have been experienced the phenomenon. For the recommendations of our study, it may be recommended the following. Proper and detailed orientation of the setup, equipments and procedures before exposure to intensive care unit. Facilitative approach in dealing with students. Simulation exposure in order to have a bit of a grasp of what is happening in the actual settings. Further studies and updated scenario on what cases encountered in the clinical settings of intensive care units. Findings may be used to assess nurse educators in shaping effective clinical learning environment for four student nurses. And lastly, the material may serve as basis for the nurse educators to be able to assess and offer necessary support to the student nurses while in practice. That's all. Thank you for listening for our study. Thank you, and you will be in the hot seat, no? Because we are now on the question and answer part of our presentation. So, uh, it's about ICU experience of nursing students. And maybe these students are from our own college? All right. Some of them are here? No. All right. Are there, let me see, from our audience, how many of you nursing students uh, who are with us today have experienced um, uh, having been assigned in the ICU? All right. Raise your hand, please. All right. So I am sure you will have questions, no? Uh, <laughs> because you have been, you have experienced how it is to work in the ICU, okay? Um, of course, I have never been to ICU, <laughs> but I have, I have experienced uh, being there when one of my nephews was had a fracture, no head, a skull fracture, and he was admitted uh, in a hospital, and he was assigned in the ICU, and I, I could really see, you know, the difference of being in the ICU and the ordinary uh, 
a room or ward in the hospital. Okay? So let's, who will ask the first question? Those are, yes, okay. Yes, ma'am. We have the microphone there, ma'am. All right. Uh, uh, tell us your name, madam. And good morning. I'm Mrs. Marites Roblesa from the College of Nursing. This is not a question, just a clarification uh, with regards to the recommendation, uh, especially with the first recommendation, which was uh, recommended that you must provide uh, orientation, detailed ori orientation with the student. Though with the recommendation, why is it that it is still in the recommendation? I remember in the ICU, but I am assigned also, sir, in the ICU. So on the first day of the clinical exposure, uh, we provided the first day is for orientation alone. And at the same time, with the recommendation, it contradicts with the narration of your student. Nga, Diba, they have a good uh, orientation. That's why I question okay, number one, you get so meaning to say that it should not be recommended. Okay, if it's recommended, so meaning you don't provide the proper orientation to the student. Clarification ko lang, ma'am. Kaya daw nag-contradict sa narration sa student when you do the interview. Alright, so shall we hear from our presenters? Thank you very much, Ma'am Roblesa, for that question. Not a question. It's question, not a question and suggestion. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. So noted. We will do that. We will uh, I think revise that. our recommendations, especially yeah. the number one recommendations. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. <laughs> On That's the first day, whole day, we give the general orientation about the ICU, the setup, everything, the machine that is being done. Or uh, will be provided to the student for the experience. So, I hindi ko gin accept ng recommendation ang detailed orientation. Uh, so, clarification. Yeah, so, accept, the, the, uh, the presenters have uh, <laughs> noted your recommendation. However, it could be that as a result of the study, uh -oh. as a result of the study, uh -oh. uh, maybe the students, uh, although they were oriented, but you probably yes, found sir. out that they need more, probably, yeah. more uh, oh. because, strengthen. Yeah. Take a, strengthen. With uh -oh. the narration nila, sir, do medyo nang contradict. Kati, uh, with the interview, dito sa inyo nga interview, nga, the student said nga daw they have a good orientation with ICU. Oo. Yeah. 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 So, uh, that, I don't know. You have an answer for that? Yes, ma'am. Because uh, comparing for the uh, previous experiences that we have, Students now, especially the millennials, have short span of uh, ang short ang attention span nila. So I think we have to reorient or we have to do a detailed uh, reorientation again for the ano <laughs> But uh, thank you very much for the suggestions. All right. So it's more of strengthening, no, or enriching more the the okay. orientation of our students will be uh, in the ICU. Thank you for that uh, recommendation, madam. No? All right. So in other words, our College of Nursing is doing their part no, in the orientation of our students who will be assigned in the ICU. No? Because truly, it's not, it's not a joke to be there no, with all the patients or about sim dying. No? Sim dying. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. You will be given extra points. Kindly uh, identify yourself first, um, and you know you are. We know that you are from College of Nursing because of your uniform. Okay. <laughs> um, good morning. I, my name is Ashley Dean Spears from Level Two, and Moms, um, ask na kami question. Were there any negative responses or criticisms which were expressed by any of the clinical students? Uh, again. Um, were there any negative responses or criticisms which were expressed by any of the clinical instructor, uh, clinical students? So far, no. The only thing that they responded is the um, limited time that they exposed in ICU. So it seems. And uh, they love to expose in ICU because of the learning that they acquire. 
And so it seems that they have accepted the challenge no, to be there because, of course, to be a nurse later on, whether you like it or not, you will be assigned in the ICU. Okay? Very nice. No? Very nice question. So, so far, no negative. Uh, it seems that they, nobody said that they do not want to be assigned there. No? In, in fact, according to you, they need more time in the ICU. Alright, that's good. Are there more questions from this? We have already heard from that wing, so we will uh, we will see you know monitoring. Mula wala ka no? Alright, so, so can we hear from this uh, side? Questions? None? Or from that side there? No, there are many of you who are on that side. So anybody from? You like to be assigned in the ICU? All right. Yes, um, Dr. Pinetrante. Okay, good morning. Thank you for the presentation. I'm Mary O. Penetrante. I'm the director of the University Research Center. The study is a phenomenological study, right? So when you say phenomenon, it's it's a, a situation where it is unique or unusual. So what is unusual that you have found out in your study as to the experience of this nursing student? What is the unusual situation that you have found out? So maybe you will describe the phenomenon of being in the uh, ICU. Maybe you could answer that by um, why did you use phenomenology uh, method of qualitative research in dealing with uh, the phenomenon of being in the um, ICU by our students? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I was motivated, we are motivated to conduct this study in order to explore really the feelings and um, uh, feelings of the students assigned in ICU and for um, also for uh, the development of teaching strategies on the student nurses in order to be more comfortable when they are assigned in ICU. So what is, what is unique in the situation of uh, nursing students assigned in the ICU? What is why have you uh, identified it something that is interesting to study? Yeah, so like what is interesting uh, when, what is interesting in the ICU that the nursing students uh, could, uh, could probably could not remember because could not, could not forget because it's very interesting. That's why you dealt that in your study. Yes, like being assigned in the ICU is really different from being assigned in a ward, ordinary ward, for example. Uh, so what is that? What is, why, why is it different? In, I, in ICU, uh, the clinical experience in uh, ICU, that is a very uh, special area in which uh, you can see the patient in critically ill, wherein you, there are many equipments there in ICU, and um, the procedure as compared in the ward is uh, very interesting because um, it's a critiquing and uh, you have to do critical thinking in assessing the patient as well as um, other um, procedures that you have to enhance to your patient is somewhat uh, different and most uh, critical as compared in the ward. Yeah, so you mean uh, students assigned in this in intensive care unit has to do a lot of things yes. and they might be exposed to some yeah, stress or situation where they can, you know, may not be able to deal with something like that? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank that you, makes their life there ex uh, more expert, more... Um, their experience there more interesting, yeah. no? Because uh, it's really, you know, when 
someone is dying, could you imagine how you will, how, what will you do as a nurse, no, to help the doctor? What will you do as a nurse to do, perform your role? Okay. Okay. You have some questions, madam? Yes, please. I guess uh, this is not a question, just an insight. When we talk about phenomenon, I guess as a feedback, uh, asking students on how they felt being assigned in a special area like IC or OR, I guess we could deal the phenomenon is that every student has a different persona and they respond to different situations. And the good thing is when they ask students, when they're already leveling up, they want to be assigned still in OR, in ICU. That's a very good phenomenon. Ibig sabihin, they want to learn more. Although there are really a finding sub themes like nervousness, and that is normal, right? So I, we saw the sub themes and the major themes. Thank you for that. Thank you. Right, so the fear, you know, sometimes the fear of the new experience. All right, so later on you will overcome that and you have learned, you no, know, you have learned. Okay, all right, so are there other questions? I would like to acknowledge the presence of the Dean of our College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Fernandez, is with us. All right, and Dr. Dusaran, our director for accreditation, is also with us. You have no questions, sir? <laughs> I was joking with, with him and said, you ask questions and then there will be a, you will have a problem when you go home. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you have no, we have no more questions to concretize our, our thank you to our participants. I would like to request... Uh, our director, Dr. Penetranti, to please be on stage. We will award our certificate of recognition to our um, presenters. Okay. Uh, we, we, we only award one certificate, no, because in the program, we only have one presenter, but certificates uh, for other presenters will follow. Okay. So the same citation of, in the certificate and um, of course, the, the, the different title now, this time it's Lived Clinical Experiences of Nursing Students Assigned in the Intensive Care Unit. All right, so signed by our director, Dr. Penetrante, uh, BPAA, Dr. Rio, and our dear president, Dr. Chidoro Sirobles. All right, shall we give a big, big hand to our presenter once again? Presenters once again. Right. Picture taking? Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, token will be uh, available on Friday. All right. Shall we proceed? No, we are, we are going very fast. No? All right. So, nursing our uh, so, uh, teachers and uh, students are really fast. All right. They do not want to be the last. They always want to be the first. All right. So we'll go to the next presenter. This time, uh, they are led by Professor uh, Hilongos. So the presenters will also present the title of their study and the rest part of the study. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So the title of our study is uh, Stranger Within Me, a lived experience of menopausal nurses. So, though damo, good makarelate dili sa amon later. So my co-researchers are Professor Hilomos Anali and Professor Heron Lena and yours truly, Professor Sampiano. Okay. So the purpose of our study is to explore, examine, and describe the lived experiences of nurses who are in menopause. So every woman may obtain a diversity of experience during menopausal stage. This process may be complex occurrences which covers physiological, psychological, and social aspects of midlife experience. Many studies had been conducted about the experiences on women on menopause, 
but none has been known on the nature of experience among nurses on menopause. Nurses have essential role in providing optimal health outcomes for their patients. Nurses have learned and gained adequate knowledge about menopause as well as different strategies on how to combat and elevate the effect of phenomenon on the well-being of a woman. At present, most of the medical and health-related researches were focused on women in general who experience menopause, but none on a specific or selected group of women, considering that some women of today's generation assume leadership roles in certain institutions. Productivity plays an important role in the success of every responsibility of a woman. If a woman reached through the transition period of menopause, some women may not function productively because of bodily changes which can be disturbing and may affect their well-being. Thus, the study was conducted. So the question is, what are the experiences of nurses who are in menopause? For the methodology, we have uh, utilized the design of descriptive phenomenology. It's a widely used in social science research as a method to explore and describe the lived experiences of individual. In our study, it would be the experiences of nurses on menopause. Theoretical sampling is purposive. It's uh, selected based on characteristics of the population and the objectives of the study. In our case, inclusion criteria would be those, those women who have experienced menopause or nurses, two to five years post cessation of the menses, number two, single or married, number three, presently employed as nurse educators. Our exclusion criteria is that induced menopause would not be included or meaning they had surgical removal of the reproductive organ data saturation refers to the point in the research process where no new information is discovered in data analysis and this redundancy signals to researchers researchers that data collection may cease ethical consideration we made use of informed consent. It's the process for getting permission before conducting the interview. Data, in, uh, data collection, in-depth interview, and return interview. For return interview, we, uh, we had or we did the members check and tri triangulate data and findings for data analysis are brought back to the original participant. Data analysis, we made use of the Hickner's 14 steps method. Uh, synthesis and discussions. A finding related to our study states that while the remaining number of women included in the study has given varying degrees of responses, which include feelings of relief, not noticing much of a change, or a feeling that they can handle pretty, pretty well, one woman described the, experiences, uh, the experience as unusual. Most women started with an overall statement about their experience of menopause as it seems like a roller coaster ride. One participant considered menopause experience as a very hard time in life. So we, uh, our study developed the major themes physical symptoms, emotional symptoms, role expectations of nurses on menopause, and the coping mechanism of nurses on menopause. These are examples of verbatim answers of our respondents. For physical symptoms, I have pain when we do love making. So the south theme there is sexual discomfort. 
For emotional symptoms, irritability, bow, daugatilindugid buhok ko. Coping mechanisms, diversion of attention, ginaano ko siya ya, ginapaliwaliwa. Basta makalagaw lang kuya, kagawin daw siya. And lastly, for role expectations, sexual relationship with husband. When we are doing lovemaking, bisa na kamenopause ka na, it's a matter of kwanon mo lang ya eh. In order to please your husband, in order to make both ends meet. Happy siya, happy ka man. Conclusions. Many are reacting to the last major theme. I assume that nakarelate ka mo. Okay. The findings revealed that there were four major themes and 12 sub-themes. The major themes were physical symptoms experienced by nurses on menopause, emotional symptoms experienced by a nurse in on menopause, role expectations of a nurse in menopause, and coping mechanisms of a nurse in menopause. The identified themes form the basis for the conclusion that most of the symptoms felt by nurses in menopause are physical and emotional. Several roles of a nurse in menopause on menopause and their coping mechanisms also emerged during the interview. For our recommendations, a support group should be created to provide an opportunity for these women to share their experiences and feelings, coping mechanisms, or any first-hand information about menopause. Further studies may also be done and IEC materials related to menopause. That's all. Have a good day. Okay, so men oppose. <laughs> right? So there were reactions during the presentation, so I'm very sure there will be questions to be asked. Right? So our presenters are now ready to entertain your questions. Um, uh, uh, other, you know, there is there is a, a quantifying part there. No, you know, it's not just a wo woman uh, in menopause, but it's the nurse nurses, not the nurses who are in menopause, right? So, what what could be the effect? No, of uh, menopause to nurses, all right? All right. So, shall we have the first question? Yes, yeah, that's the first question. Oh, sige. <laughs> Madam Director. <laughs> yeah, that's actually my question. Because you have chosen nurse as, nurses as your respondents, right? So, what makes uh, menopause for nurses so unique? What... What something there that others others might not have experienced? We are interested to know because that's a very very interesting thing to know. Yeah. Okay. So may we hear from our presenters? Um, thank you very much for the question. Uh, firstly, there were studies made on the experiences of women having menopause but there are about limited number of studies dealing with nurses having menopause and secondly we chose nurses on menopause because even though we're nurses there would still be varying uh, degrees or experiences of the signs and symptoms that we would undergo and it also depends on the coping mechanisms of women as uh, on that matter. So I guess it's a very, very um, interesting subject to study. Yeah. yeah. You have a follow-up, madam? Yeah, because uh, we know that nurses know how, how to cope with these things, right? Maybe that's an interesting part. How, how do they make, you know, uh, adjustments because... 
they know about this, yeah? Meaning that they are trained to uh, to address this problem. So, so what is interesting that you have found out in your study? Uh, thank you for that, ma'am. Uh, in our study, with the verb verbatims that we have uh, examined, even though they are nurses, they still experience the stranger, you know, the, the symptoms on menopause. You know? They are uh, like our title, stranger. You know, they, they are shocked. Why is it that uh, uh, it is happening to me on their part? No, there are instances that uh, they wanted to go to the hospital during night time without apparent reason. No? So as nurses, uh, if there are symptoms, we can manage uh, our uh, symptoms no, with our patient. But as nurses, as our participants, no, they are the ones who can feel the symptoms and yet they are uh, nervous they are they don't know what to do like that thank you uh, for so, that so the f the findings points out to that stranger no meaning that even if they even they are nurses they they feel that they are not yet you know capable of adjusting to the symptoms of this menopausal thing something like that na parang feeling na stranger pa siya gihapon despite the skills the knowledge the experience right so that is why you have the title the stranger in me okay thank you uh, yeah ma'am I, I think that's that's why the title is a stranger within me because although they have the knowledge about it but considering that you do not have probably the second menopause, no? you only have that first experience and because of that being the first, then it will really be a strange thing. Although you have already a lot of uh, textual knowledge concepts about menopause. In addition, oh, sorry. Yeah. In addition, sir, it's a stranger within me because um, before the, the menopausal stage, you know yourself, you know your routine. But by the time it comes, you, for, a no, for no apparent reason, you don't know what is happening within you. You cry for no apparent reason, you are confused, you feel hot, and you ask questions, is the aircon on? Is it on full blast? Um, your colleagues will tell you, yes, ma'am, it's, it's on full blast. So why am I feeling hot? So that is, that is just an example of why we said, uh, why the title is A Stranger Within Me. Okay, so thank you, Dr. West. Hi, Bud West from, I think I'll represent Sentia et Fetus today. Um, my question is, you talked about the physical and emotional concerns and the coping me mechanisms used in those regards. I didn't hear you say anything about the spiritual aspect, and I'm wondering if any of the respondents that you talked with actually mentioned their spirituality and maybe how they use that as a coping mechanism to deal with the part of being a stranger with them. Um, actually, there was um, two respondents who said um, the, one of the coping mechanisms is praying. But of the uh, four respondents that we had, only two mentioned about praying. The rest, meaning um, the three, when we tried to look into the responses of our, of the coping mechanisms of our respondents, um, it ranked below the, ano, hindi siya ang three out of four. Thank you. But, but of course, it's mentioned by some of your respondents, no, that prayer could be one of the coping mechanisms okay thank you they are all right it's uh okay ma'am rio first good morning i'm uh, professor rio from the college of nursing uh it seems we're so serious here okay 
uh, one thing that caught my attention was uh, one uh, statement uh, in something like uh, sa sexuality ano to, uh, the response said uh, the respondents or the participants said bisan menopause kwanon tani ano to man please uh, <laughs> ano bisan bisan nakamenopause ka na it's a matter of kwanon mo na lang ya eh. this is okay. these are the exact okay uh, the statement. exact bisan nagamenopause ti kwanon mo na lang ya eh. that is the word kwanon mo na lang ya eh, is very vague so i just wonder if you have asked deeper or as the respondent what is this kwanon mo na lang ya e ano na siya ang kwanon na lang so that all of us here who are on the menopausal stage and in menopause we should also know how to kwanon mo na lang ta e <laughs> thank you okay thank you for that question so this kwanon mo lang eh, we did not reiterate this one because of the parental guidance, no. But according to... <laughs> right, right. Just, 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 just a minute, madam. Just a minute. Okay. Do we have minors inside? Do we have minors? Do we have uh, students <laughs> below 18 years old? All right. So we have, oh, there are some. So probably you could uh, explain that afterwards. But probably you could refine your words. That's a way that... Uh, it will be understandable but not so uh, vulgar. Okay, so uh, we have clarified this in our statement. You know, with our one of the respondents, we clarified this one. You know, when there is a sexual interaction, sometimes uh, husbands and wives uh, are already tired and... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Diretsyohon ko na lang, gina-fake. Ha, gina-fake. Ang inamin niya is gina-fake niya na lang. Na kuno abi nakalabot siya sa climax. So, na siya. No? So, are you satisfied, madam, of the answer? Are you satisfied of the fake answer? No, because I am just interested. Because in phenomenology, there should be no vague... Uh, you know, a uh, statement and everything that should be um, uh, probe, probe, okay, should be probe. No, you have to do probing so that you will really understand what the participant uh, really mean. Oh, Thank you. So the, I, I think they did that. Um, we did after that, that oh. well, after that statement, we actually. Um, clarified with the respondent and that is what she meant by kwanon mo na lang yai. Okay. So, and they just have that presented uh, word for word no, because those are the direct words but they did some uh, probing and really the word madam is fake, you fake it. No, you fake it. Alright. So here, we will accept the fake answer. No? <laughs> it's not fake news. <laughs> fake answer. Alright, so thank you, Madam, for that question and clarification. Are there other questions from... Yes, uh, Madam. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I heard uh, when you presented that you were able to discover four major themes and seven, uh, 12 sub-themes, am I right? So in the role expectation, I would just like to ask, because you just pointed out, you gave an, one example that what is the role of a nurse uh, undergoing menopausal uh, period to the husband? May I just ask, were you able to dwell on how these nur nurses cope when we talk of role expectation as to the their children, the, to their colleagues, have they said something about Paris na di ba, malan ka gina to, nga gainit ang ulo usually sa mga moms nga nagamenopause. So ano hambal sa mga kids? Naghambal ba ang mom nga, please anak ka, nang pasensya lang ka mo to, gainit ulo ko, gamenopause ko. Were you able to discover so, so such, uh, uh, such, uh, you know, and what uh, are the coping mechanisms of the woman? That's the, the thing that we want to know of. 
Okay. All right. Um, the sub themes that came out for role expectations are the following. No, the twelve includes the others. Okay. So number one is sexual relationship with husband. I'm going number one. Then we have uh, fulfilling obligations as a wife. Expecting the husband to support the wife and domestic obligations and responsibilities in the house as a mother. So far, none mentioned about children and colleagues. Okay. So, yeah, madam. Yeah. Do you have? Did you? Do you have the? All merit. All merit. All right. That is why there is that part, no? Na you fake it because you could not do that with a single, no? Single. <laughs> so word for the day is fake. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that that gives a signal that the respondents are really merit, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but because the respondents are from CPU, so we assume that uh, the married are married and single are single. Okay? Right? So, do you have more? Yes, uh, Dr. Fernandez. I've experienced already that menopause, but uh, those statements as if no fake. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, their study is very good. So this is among nurses, uh, those who had experienced menopausal stage. Um, the recommendation, I was not able to hear about it. So they can probably, or another study, will be conducted with non-nursing teachers and also with single who had that menopausal stage. Thank you. Yeah, yeah madam. All right. So that could be, no? Other recommendation is for probably to... To see to it that when you are a nurse, with your knowledge about nursing and nursing care and about your body physiologically and anatomically, you are more prepared compared to those who are non-nurse or in the non-medical um, profession. Okay? Right? So, shall we give a big, big hand to our very uh, to our presenters with a very interesting topic on menopause. So, I would like to 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 come up stage again to award our certificate of recognition. So with the same text, uh, another certificate is awarded to our presenters, the Professor Hilongos, Professor Hiron, and Professor Sampiano um, for uh, presenting their paper entitled A Stranger Within me, a lived experience of women, nursing, nurses on menopause. Uh, again, given this 12th day of March 2019 at Central Philippine University, Haro El City, Philippines. Signed by our director, Dr. Penetrante, BPA, Dr. Rio, and our beloved president, Dr. Chidoro C. Robles. Okay? Token will be given on Friday. All right. So our in charge of the picture taking. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's proceed with the next uh, study. This time they are led by Professor Britannia. Good morning, everyone. I am here to present our group study entitled Phenomenological Study of Caregiving to Cancer Patients. With me are my co researchers. Professors Nancy Grace Del Socorro, Robiana Gesto, Marites, and Ma Marites Roblesa. Next, please. 
Over the years, caregiving as a phenomenon has increased its importance. Caregiving is an individual with a noble act of giving care to cancer patients, assuming significant roles to support the patient, and often take unfamiliar tasks and absorb all the challenges a cancer patient manifests. Providing care to cancer patients is demanding. Complexity and uniqueness of caregiving to cancer patients started from the day they were diagnosed until the time they were cancer-free or sometimes out of breath. Few studies on the understanding about caregiving phenomenon was, was done. But a few study was also giving, uh, there are studies about caregivers and cancer that were done, and only a few studies were, the were on the understanding about caregiving phenomena. Next, please. Our purpose or objective of the presentation is to understand and explore about caregiving to cancer patients among faculty and staff of a tertiary university. Our research question, what are the different experiences on caregiving with cancer patients? Next, please. For the method methodology, we employ the design of descriptive phenomenology that describes the human experience, which include the feeling, the seeing, remembering, deciding, and evaluating, and even acting. We make use of propulsive data and saturation. And for our ethical consideration, this, is, this would include upholding the principles of the subject by obtaining informed consent. For the data collection, we made use of in-depth interview, audio tape, uh, some are recorded, and these are uh, unstructured question. And we perform return interview to validate and confirm the results for the, from the participants. We also made use of Atlas TI, one of the application that can help us uh, obtain the themes that we would like to have and the Heckner's method as well. For the Heckner's method, we make use of uh, the revised uh, data expli explicitation, the bracketing, of course, of the phenomenology. Then we delineate the units of those statements that we have taken. Then we cluster the different uh, statement, and we summarize and validate, and after that, we can create already themes. For the synthesis and discussion, out from our study of the participants, we can synthesize that there are varied feelings towards caregiving, and there are different challenges in caregiving, and there are also spiritual aspects which are strengthened during caregiving. Next, please. For our major themes, there are four major themes which emerge from our study. Number one are the challenges. This include the financial burden and some emotional ones from our participants, shared to us by our participants. The feelings, the feelings towards the cancer and caregiving as well. Some share that they are ambivalent, the feeling of uh, not comfortable with the caregiving, but at the same time, they would accept the fact that they are caregiving. Some are also anxious. Others were also angered, and some are sad, but some have joys in caring. For the learnings, we have taken a positivism out of the sharing of the participants. They know already how to do decision making, and they can prioritize already what is important, especially on the financial aspect. And for the spiritual strengthening, they have knowledge all of our participants acknowledge their faith and they rely on spiritual uh, belief. For our transcripts, I have only taken a few of the verbatim of our participants. For the challenges, 
Participant shared, daw kamahal gid. Sang una, di na pamangkot ko gid na siya. And, uh, pamangkot ko gid siya, nga kung magpa-check up siya, may obra ako. So this is a workload uh, challenge. For the feelings, gabirabira ako hibi sa auto. Nasubuan gid kami, pero dapat di magpakita. Hibi mo na lang. So those were the feelings of our participant. And for the learnings, damo gid ko na learn kag after this pagid, dapat maka decision ka dayon. And for strengthening of faith, wala imposible sa Ginoo. Dapat strong ka gid spiritually. Siya gid makapyutan mo. Next slide please. For our essence of the phenomenon, we believe that caregiving entails different challenges, learning, strengthening in faith, and feelings towards caregiving to cancer patients. But, but of course, these are only true to those individuals who has only undergone the caregiving phenomenon and may not be true to all persons who have cared for cancer patients. For our recommendation, since they were, uh, the patient, our participants are actually working at the same time, we would, we, would, we would like to recommend that maybe the administration can form a support group that could give them emotional and psychological backings. We will also employ, we would like to recommend that will be, uh, the IEC will be employed, like information, education, and communication. And of course, lastly, this study may be used for further studies for validation of the findings. Thank you very much. I would like to request all other proponents of the study to please come up the stage so you could help your colleague. Okay? So just a uh, clarification also we could have uh, more questions from our students. So the respondents in the study are the caregivers of those who have uh, patients who are uh, sick of cancer all right so the respondents are the caregivers so we are trying to look into the phenomenon or the experience of those who are giving cares to uh, patients with cancer okay so clear now they are students no? so you could ask questions all right yes uh, dr paras Hello, good morning. good morning. Dr. Porras from the College of Medical Laboratory Science. Good morning, I just, Ma. Yes, I just would like to ask, as to what type of cancer patients did you use as your participants? Any type, pero we have uh, the end stage cancer. Uh, do you have any uh, participants with first stage cancer? First stage, ma'am? No, ma'am. Usually we do the end stage. Oh, Thank you. The terminal case, ma'am. Thank you for that question. All right. So it's in the fourth, fourth stage. Fourth stage. Oh, right. Why, why do you think? Why did you choose the fourth and not just the first? Open. Yes, ma'am. Most of the identified participants here are those having uh, uh, a relative, siblings, or a parent, or a husband, or a wife. Nga, on the terminal stage already. Kay some are diagnosed nga the medyo on the third or fourth stage na sila. May I add that uh, in the fourth stage, our participants has already uh, explored more of the, the phenomenon of caregiving because on the first stage, maybe uh, other symptoms were not yet manifested, such as therapies chemotherapies and other, uh, other adjunct therapies that were given to only first stages. So uh, those are not yet very uh, seen or uh, not uh, 
being experienced by the participant on the first stage. But on the fourth stage, there will be a lot of therapies going on. There will be psychological, emotional, and even the chemical reactions that were given to them. Thank you for that question, Ma'am Paras. Okay. You have a question, Madam? Please. Uh, good morning. So, uh, good morning, Ma'am Lian. Please do not unfriend me for this. Uh, I would like to ask all of the researchers. All of oh, our okay, researchers. Yes, okay. Uh, all of you are seasoned nurses who have been in the caring profession for a long time, and now you are educators in the College of Nursing. So I would like to ask, how did you apply bracketing in your study? Um, uh, in bracketing, um, we actually, we do have our own biases, especially we know already the uh, signs and symptoms. And in that, we, you know, first, we try to sit down and talk about our own biases. And uh, of course, me personally, I have two parents with cancer. So we try to do away with that and we acknowledge that uh, biases and share it with other members. Okay. Yeah, all, all members should answer. Otherwise, you will not be given your certificate. I will not answer for all. Is that acceptable, Ma'am Lian? Thank you very much for the question. All right. So the team leader no, has answered for the group. Okay. So it's really, it's really a, a, say, a, an experience when you have you yourself no is uh, uh, also a caregiver of of uh, patients with uh, cancer so that's why there is a need for you to to identify your, your own success no otherwise that would affect the uh, the result of your study no considering that there is the this is a qualitative so it's more of um you words no uh, because you made use of interviews okay are but sir, I would like to add, what is unique in our study is that after we have, uh, after the sharing of our participant, we have seen, uh, we have found out that there is joy in caregiving. That even they have challenges, they have bad experiences about the caregiving phenomenon, but yet they find joy in giving care to their loved ones. Yeah, okay, especially if they are your loved ones. So there is there is, there is a dif different feeling when you are helping uh, your loved ones, especially to alleviate the pain. You no, know, when they have that. Yes, uh, Madam Dean. Okay. So good morning once again. And uh, since we're dealing with uh, different patient, uh, uh, cancer patients, and uh, our caregiving is important, I would like to know if your respondents were. At what age level? And uh, are they all male or females or just mixed? Uh, uh, actually, they're mo uh, all of them are female. Mm, okay. Mm. And they have already, uh, they're already on the professional level. They are aging on the 30 to 40 bracket. Uh, okay. So, uh, because I'm expecting also if what could be for a young girl... Uh, that, would be a further, that would be a very good study, ma'am. Yes, and also for a guy caring for a, a patient. Yes, so that would be another... That, thank you very much for that, ma'am. The instinct of a female is different from that. Okay. okay. I will talk to all our co-researchers and we will do something about it. <laughs> and on the type of thank can, you for that. On the type of cancer, Madam, uh, is, well, is, is it breast cancer? No, or? we cannot actually generate that. But uh, that kind of participant that we really have to have to zero in in one type of cancer. And that is um, we have prostate. Yeah. We have most are prostate. Prostate. prostate and there's cancer. ones in the breast. Oh, okay. But end stage. So female uh, caregivers. Uh, caregivers. Uh. Yeah, the, the cancer patients are male or female and female, while the care, caregivers that you uh, dealt are uh, serve as respondents are the, are females. Okay, clear now. So on the type of cancer, it varies. No, some are prostate, some are uh, over ovary, ovarian cancer. 
Okay, yes, uh, another dean from the medical laboratory. Uh, this is just an additional and uh, Thank you, ma'am. Ma uh, I just would like to know whether your cancer patients are inpatients admitted in the hospital or just in the uh, in the respective homes. Now, for the patients, cancer patients, they are usually live in with the caregiver. They stay with the caregiver. One house lang sila, bali, at home. Okay. Uh -oh, not in the hospital anymore. Okay. So, so our caregiving is focused on how they give care at home. Mm. And then when the patient goes to the hospital for treatment, so they go. But usually, most of our cancer patients is with the caregiver. They are living with them. Okay. So how long did you um, gather your data to this effect? Actually, almost two years, Mom. <laughs> this is a very long study, not only because we're lazy to continue the study and we don't have time, but uh, because of uh, the duration also of uh, asking questions, you have, you have to account for the availability of our participant. Of course, we, have, we employed the three-day three, three, uh, cycle, a uh, three-visit cycle, where in the first, we create rapport, building trust with them, and they, uh, discuss the expectation of our study and the second is the the question and answer portion and the third is when we validate the the things that we have taken but usually mom it's a very long uh, process since we are talking about sensitive issue which is cancer now uh, uh, since your patients or your uh, participants were on their end stage status so my question for now, are they still alive and kicking yes, at this point? Okay. No, ang isa na patay na ma'am. No. Pero during our question in our our study interview, she uh, the, the patient was still alive and later so come to death na. Okay. So it's the caregiver, no, who was uh, who served as the respondent of the study the the thing is they are giving care to the uh, canes, uh, cancer patients yes madam thank you for the presentation i'm happy that this group finally made it to the stage <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you for the push ma'am or else uh, we will uh, delay it again <laughs> Napilitan. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm interested to know because uh, uh, the nurses or the caregivers from the Philippines are known to be, you know, uh, yeah, compassionate, uh, have that very unique uh, na skills no, in giving uh medical care sa patient. So, my question is, what particular caregiving attributes that you found out that really is uh, supportive of that being known to be a good caregiver in the world? Like nurses in all over the world, they said to be, or Filipino nurses all over the world, they said to be the best nurses. No. So, what is that? What is that in your study that you found out that is really consistent with that statement? Is it really um, in our Actually, in our, uh, our respondent, our participants are not all nurses. There are only two. But if you, uh, we have, uh, of course, in the two participants that we have, we can see that there's already anticipatory, uh, uh, what you call this one, um, there's anticipation of the signs and symptoms because they knew it already. But for the overall participants, what is so unique, ma'am, that I have said earlier, is that even if they have challenges, they have spiritual and emotional challenges, they have feelings, anger, ambivalence, but still at the end of the day, they find joy. That, I think, is a very trait of a Filipino because caregiving for them is a blessing of taking care of a loved one that soon may be cured 
or sometimes will be dead. So I think that's the most uh, the best characteristics. Okay, are you satisfied, Madam? So even though the respondents are not nurses, but because yes. they are Filipinos, yes. the loving and caring attitude of Filipinos. Most um, studies sir, are caregivers that are paid, but in Filipino setting, it's different. It's really a relative who loves to care for a cancer patient. It's a labor of love. Yes, a noble act. profession, a noble uh, act. Act. Okay, so none, no more questions from our students? You like to become caregivers? <laughs> All right. No more. All right, no more. All right, so shall we give a big, big hand to our presenters and Dr. Penetrante, please come up the stage to award our certificate of appreciation, recognition with the note that your token will be given on Friday. All right. All right. So the same citation, citations. So certificate of recognition is awarded to our presenters um, for presenting their paper entitled "Phenomenological Study of Caregiving to Cancer Patient." Um, during the 20th Faculty Research Symposium. Again, given this 12th day of March 2019 at Central Philippine University, Ililu City, Philippines, signed by our Director uh, for Research, Dr. Penetrante, BPEA, Dr. Irving Rio, and our uh, President, Dr. Teodoro Cirobles. Okay? Big, big hand, please. One more. Okay. Picture taking. Done. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> then we have this one. Uh, there will be a lot of probably of um, definition of terms, not. Postpartum depression. Right. So not not all, no, not all um, could understand this. No, postpartum depression as experienced by adolescent mothers. Right. So shall we give a big big hand to our next presenters? They are led by Professor Lamasan. Thank you. Good morning. The last but not the least. Our group is very privileged to be here to share with you the findings of our study entitled Postpartum Depression as Experienced by Adolescent Mothers. I am Professor Nilida Lamasan and my co-researchers Professor Rita Pinasso and Professor Gina Bautista. Professor Rita Pinasso will present our study. Thank you. Good morning, although I'm presenting. I'm just presenting because Ma'am Lamasan is ready to answer your questions. Okay? Kay nagaubo si Ma'am, ti ako lang inapahambal niya di sa tunga. We are the last group and I hope it will be the, not the best, but like the rest. Okay? 
So the title, <laughs> the title of our of our study is postpartum depression as experienced by adolescent mothers. So who among you are experiencing depression now? Us, Faisa. Okay, the purpose uh, of this presentation is to examine and understand the experiences of adolescent mothers with postpartum depression. Sir, definitely I will define postpartum as, uh, as an introduction and uh, later if you have questions, we'll just, Ma'am Lamasan will answer for you. I'm just reminding. PPD, as what was previously mentioned, is a mental illness that can begin during pregnancy or occurs 6 to 12 months after birth. It refers to morbid and persistent depressive episodes that begins in or extends into the postpartum period. Adolescent mothers face plenty of challenges from dealing with the shame and stigma of an unplanned pregnancy to finishing school and finding employment. But many also deal with the challenges of psychological problems. In this particular, in particular, this study attempted to answer the following research questions. What does it mean to experience postpartum depression among adolescent mothers? And what are the essences of postpartum depression among adolescent mothers? For the methodology, for the design, this is a descriptive phenomenology. And for the theoretical sampling, we use purposive and data saturations with the six participants. Uh, originally, we have nine participants, but of course, the three did not qualify. So we uh, delve on the six participants. Ethical consideration, we use the in, uh, informed consent. And if the uh, participant is a minor one, we, uh, the mother is also there or the guardian in order to sign for the consent. For the data collection, in-depth interview and return interview was used. And data analysis was done under Hickner's 14 steps of descriptive phenomenological strategy. And this study was run with the Atlas TI, Berlin 2016. For synthesis and discussion, perceptions of postpartum depression, a large number of adolescents are undiagnosed because they do not meet the DSM-4 diagnostic and statistical manual of disorders criteria for depression. For post-birth support, lack of support from the immediate family and significant others or support system may affect the, result, uh, may affect the perception of the teenage uh, or adolescent mothers in this case. Also, postpartum depressions and symptoms are enumerated according or uh, according to what is observed or experienced by the participants themselves. For the major themes, we found the following, awkwardness with the presence of the baby, incompetence in caring for the baby, feelings of agitation, demoralization with the care for the baby, and lack of pleasure and interest in most all activities, and feeling of worthlessness or guilt. For the awkwardness in the presence of the baby, it is apparent that having the mere presence of the baby make them awkward. The participants stated difficulty and uneasiness with just having the baby, even as early as the few hours after delivery, and the time spent with the baby proves to make them uneasy. In this presentation, we, uh, I enumerated the ones that proved that awkwardness with the presence of the baby with the verbatim that tamaan ka budlay, nagrebeldi, budlay kay siyempre wala, budlay gidi, gasakit man sa ulo kong diin, and una-una, mabudlay, daw anugid ka tamaan ka budlay, and budlay ang oras bala sa bata. Uh, we have different colors since this represents the participants, the identity of the participants. 
For the incompetence, well, out of the six participants, four of them express inexperience or lack of experience in terms of caring for the baby. They express inadequacy and would not need to have assistance in order to care for the baby as verbalized. Ginabuligan niya man ako. Hindi ko mabalaan kung anong himuon ko. Ang mother ko kay hindi pa ako kabalo kung paano paliguon or himusan. Wala ako kabalo kung ano obrahon ko. Without the assistance from their significant others, they felt that they are not capable of taking good care of their babies. For the feelings of agitation, Three of the participants express being upset of having the baby and being in conflict with their significant others. As verbalized, one of the participants revealed that she was so upset that she was so confused where to buy milk for the baby and that if she has a problem, the tendency was to run for the family members but eventually could not really ask for, for help since they had a conflict at the time the baby was born. As, as what it was verbalized, galibog ang utok kong diin mabakal gatas. Kontra man siya, kay nagaproblema man siya. Amun, amun naman lang na ang problema ya ang mama. Na feel ya nga sa pagbata ya may problema sila. So usually, the problem is with the mother-in-law. <laughs> Lack of pleasure or interest in most all activities. Sadness or lack of pleasure as one of the symptoms of postpartum depression was significantly manifested by one of the participants, although some of the participants also expressed some sadness with their situation. In the case of one of the participants, sadness was the most significant theme that emerged during the interview. Not only that she expressed sadness, but it also could be observed by the way she spoke and could be observed in her facial at expression. She verbalizes, Nasubuan ako kay ako lang ang wala katapos. She means she did not finish her studies because she became pregnant early and have a child as early as 15 years old. Nasubuan ako kay bata pa ako, may bata na. Kakasubo man ako sa ila balay. Ang nasubuan ko kay wala ako istoryahon bala. Wala siya istoryahon. The other theme, feelings of guilt or worthlessness, expression of remorse or repentance by the participants was observed when they verbalized that may ara man times nga gahinulsol ako. Naghinulsol gid ako kay wala ako katapos pag eskwela. This participant expressed regret of not having finished school because of the birth of the baby. The other two participants also shared the same reaction or sentiments when they verbalized that Naghinulsol ako, grabe gid ang paghinulsol ko, which means that she regretted, regretted too much. So those were the five uh, major themes that was uh, that emerged, and the essence of the phenomenon is the postpartum depression entails different inadequacies and adjustments brought about by just the mere presence of the baby. Most of their ill feelings were brought about by their untimely pregnancy and early parenthood. Moreover, this was drawn from the similarities of the experiences that a participant shared. This was confirmed by the participants during the return interview after the findings of the study have been established. Overall, these descriptions gave an insight as well as elucidated the experiences shared by the adolescent mothers themselves. However, these findings cannot be generalized to all adolescent mothers who have experienced postpartum discussion, uh, depression, I mean. And for their recommendations, screening tools should be developed and provided so as to identify adolescent mothers experiencing postpartum depression. Referral for treatment, this treatment should be both counseling and group therapy. 
For the nurse practitioners, working with this family should screen adolescent mothers for depression using a specific tool aside from the depression assessment tool in the form of DSM-4 and 5. And further studies should be done because uh, uh, most of these studies are not well uh, presented. And have a great day. Kapos. Thank you, Madam Presenter. I would like to request all the proponents of the study to please come up stage for the question and answer part. Okay, so the title of the study is Postpartum Depression as Experienced by Adolescent Mothers. Okay, and the proponents are Professor Bautista, Lamasan, and Pinasso. Okay, so postpartum, uh, the word post is after, no? So after birth, probably after birth, all right? And these are uh, depression, depressions experienced by adolescent mothers. So when we say, Madam, adolescent mothers, these are, um, all right, so married, uh, married uh, mothers? Maybe not, all right. So these are adolescent between ages 13 to, to 18. All right. Okay, so between 13 to 18, and uh, they have given birth, and they have this experience of depression. And that is the phenomenon that was dealt, uh, that was studied by our by the proponents of this study, okay? So, is, you have some questions so far? Related to postpartum depression. All right. Is this type of depression, ah, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Uh, yeah, Dr. Fernandez, please. Uh, good morning. So first of all, it is on your title, uh, postpartum depression. So why is it that you had identified really that the, the word depression, but uh, based on your results, uh, were those really uh, depression? Actually, in some definition, depression is similar to postpartum blues which usually is normal at the early months of pregnancy. But according to Chapman, and, and in 1993, it can also be called depression when, when there are similarities that are like sadness and uh, other feelings of, uh, that relates to, oh yeah, like loneliness, that can relate to postpartum blues. So they are interchangeably. Uh, we use depression even if uh, our participants, we, called them, we presented them earlier as undiagnosed depression. Uh, for example, ma'am, you have there a uh, while ago awkwardness, the awkwardness to handle the baby. Uh -huh. So they, they become depressed because they do not know what to do. So how do we conclude that it is already a depression, on uh, a depression state? It is a uh, depression when it is... Uh, repeatedly or for a long time like more than uh, six to like six to twelve months they so, are still uh, experiencing that okay so how long did you interview with that uh, individual since uh, it would take a long time but once it is only for a day or actually our participants was like uh, they have already like uh, six months to more than uh, two years old baby mm. because uh, uh, they can still uh, experience depression after like uh, within that uh, period and so, uh, okay. although the depression may have been started may have been started uh, at the beginning of pregnancy pa nila. according to Chapman in 1993 it can even start sang, sang, sang pregnant pa sila, but we did interview them 
after sa pag-birth na nila, delivery. Mm -hmm. So because uh, I should not agree with the word depression because it might be not yet diagnosed as depression. So uh, as le unless we have to deal with that on the because, psychiatrist or so uh, on. We have many forms of depression, ma'am. We have the mild depression, moderate depression. So if that would be the case, the so mild, you should uh, I th uh, specify uh -uh. also. Because the moderate or the severe depression is usually diagnosed in the hospital. Mm. Like they are already experiencing hallucination, uh, attempt, to, attempt to injure the babies. So that should be included. We, do not, we did not include that in our study. Yes, so, uh -huh. because there are different levels of that uh -huh. or stages for that. We case. have our inclusion and exclusion criteria also. Okay. So, so we did not include those who are severely depressed. So that means you are already <laughs> identified. You had identified already your participants who had uh, post uh, partum depression. They were already depressed. Or in the process. When we interviewed the mom, we do not know that they are undergoing depression. Only during interview. Like we have interviewed uh, 10 or 11, but only 6 of them have experienced depression. So we stopped, we stopped the interview along the way when we noticed that they have no depression. Uh -oh. Only the 6 that identified namon. Do you uh, have any diagnosis of the, the basis of your depression? Yeah. As represented earlier ni Ma'am Pinaso, may nga tawag nga DSM-4. Uh, that was the criteria nga okay. at least five of that symptoms nga persistent should be present. Okay. Uh, but those uh, ibang nga gininterview namon, wala naga masulod sa dira nga criteria. Okay. But that is not yet uh, identified at what level of depression? Mild. Mild. Because they okay. did not uh, seek any uh, consultation. Mm -mm. Because we, um, since depression, that is already w alarming. So um, we have to do something yeah. on that. Thank you. So we did not include those with severe. Besides, we went also to the uh, OB gynae nga may mga patient nga diagnosed nga depressed, depression, but they will not allow us to, to go into the data for... for uh, privacy of data kag uh, you know naman pag may severe depression feeling nila mentally deranged na ila anak so may stigma bala so we do not so, so, include that yeah so you were telling us madam that uh, you base only your your assessment of um, of depression based on the indicators given shown or indicated in your instrument yes. all right and uh, that that instrument uh, could tell us that there is only mild depression, oh. not, not that uh, moderate or high level of depression. Okay? Dean uh, Porras. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Okay. I, I just would like to ask, uh, did you consider the medical status of your participants before you get them to become a participants? Because... I was thinking that they might have some medical um, disturbances, okay, prior, for, prior to them to become your participants that you may say they have, they can now be in that particular status of postpartum depression. Actually, ma'am, the first thing that we did was to go to the rural health center. Because they have this in charge nga barangay health worker nga nagkuha sang data on teenage pregnancy. And then ginarefer, may, may list sila. So ginakatuan namon house to house ang mga list nila. And uh, most of them have already like more than one year old baby. So some of them are actually, uh, one of them was interviewed during the immunization ganit sa health center. So we do not take nga uh, gin consider man namon nga kun severe depression sila wala man gina refer kami sang ilang nga barangay health worker kay usually ang mga severe de uh, depression na sa gina treat gid sang doctor blood diagnose sila ya ours is just an undiagnosed kunbaga nga sa community level lang meaning in the community level they can even they are already in their house they are living with their families uh, either sa in-laws or sa ilagid nga, nga family. Some of them are with the husband staying with them, some, some don't. Wala support. 
and uh, ano na, and some of them went back to school. Nagwent back na sila sa school. So your basis is only on the history by asking, of course, the uh, the DSWD ba uh, uh, based on their barangays. Okay. okay. So because I was thinking of there might have some uh, what you call this. Uh, um, medical disturbances, no? yung mga hormonal imbalances, may mga thyroid uh, hormone uh, deficiencies whatsoever that affects, of course, the status of these particular patients to become uh, to, to, or, to, or to have this postpartum depression. Okay. Because as we interviewed the mom, we, we also asked their, their condition upon birth. So, kung may Kung may nag-come up nga may condition, they should have told us nga may condition sila. Kasi we, do, we actually do not ask directly nga, nga nasubuan ka ba o na-depressed ka. We just ask what are your experiences. Tapos gintilinyit lang naman o gin-set uh, aside lang may mga depression. According sa amon nga. And you were guided by that uh, uh, instrument which... Uh, with indicators telling that the, this uh, respondent has uh, mm. depression, no? mild depression. Okay. They, were, they were guided by an instrument. Okay, so in other words, you have actually identified the demarcation line between the signs and symptoms only of postpartum from the so-called postpartum depression. Okay. So, meaning to say, you have identified the signs and symptoms of having this postpartum from yes from the one with the so called postpartum depression do you have a uh, ma'am because uh, we are uh, basing our uh, observation with the DSM 4 and 5 but eventually they could not be diagnosed because they do not qualify since they should have these five uh, symptoms to be diagnosed but only one or two of the uh, two or three symptoms are being uh, observed. So, it, they, they are considered depressed, but eventually they are not diagnosed as for that matter, uh, for depression. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So, not all woman, women who give birth experience postpartum depression. Not all. Uh, not obvious, all. All right. Probably you did this because these are teenage uh, mothers. So uh, probably, they have, of course, it's a given that they will. Uh, uh, the tendency there is a high tendency that they will be depressed, considering that they are teenage mothers. All right, and not ready. No, not ready. They're not ready. Quote unquote, to become mothers. Yes, madam. You are near the microphone, so I could sense that you will have a question. <laughs> okay. Uh, my question is, did the participants know that d you diagnosed them to have a mild depression? No. Did you? We just asked them, we, we just asked them then uh, according to their answers, we, we relate to our, we identify them. So meaning the result of your analysis were not... Uh, uh, what's it? This we post. went back later and told them. Uh, only th actually out of six, only three ang na reach out namon pagbalik namon, ma'am. Mm. The rest wala namon reach out kasi are not available. Yeah, uh -oh. because my concern is that what what would be the ethical implication if you have if you have diagnosed if you have known that your participants have that level of depression? Actually, ma'am, we don't diagnose. We just present to them kung amugid man ang nasiling nila na nasubuan sila, naglonely sila. Kay may ara, gan actually, may isa sila nagsiling nga, sa una, ma'am, may dumabuang ako, kay nagbusong ako. But later on, kay at first, siyempre, ang initial, he, he said that initially because the initial reaction of the family, especially of the parents, are also to to do away with them ba? Okay. But later, kaya gina-accept man sila, do so, wala mo sang, ano. Okay. Okay. Ang support ng family actually is one of the, ano nga, wala sila na dalman, bala. Okay. What I mean is, uh, because you're using a standardized tool, right? The, um, the checklist, that if the symptoms appear, you consider them to have a mild depression. Am I correct? Right? 
based on the instrument that you used, you can qualify now whether that participant has a mild depression. Okay. So, after you have analyzed, if you have identified that from the 11, you have 9 uh, respondents who you identified to fall under the having a mild depression. Correct? Okay. So, uh, now, my question is, did you uh, provide information to them that they have such? Because during our interview, mom well na sila bala daw. Ah, okay. I mean, kung nagbata sila a year ago, may depression siya during that time, but as we interviewed them, natag one year, one year after na or one year old ng bata, na naka-recover na sila kumbaga sa mild depression. Oh. We will not interview them kung wala pa sila naka-recover kay the answer might not be uh, uh, adequate bala. Oh, so that is uh, uh -oh. after the fact. Yes. After the fact after study. Na. So it is a recall of what was recall. happened after they delivered. Two okay. weeks after the delivery. Exactly. Sarah, okay. ganika isa sa ila, ma'am. Third time na. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, 14 years old siya. Wala tatay. Then another at 16, din sang 18 pagid siya. The family said we cannot control her kay... Uh, ibili nilang bata ya malakat saya ma obra or then another na naman so okay so amo na nga kon so i think the, you need to specify that in the methodology that the respondents were interviewed after several months that they have experienced yes, that depression right it's not the actual with more than 6 months old baby na sila Okay, thank you. Oh, so I think the common uh, the common denominator is all of these respondents have experienced, have experienced postpartum the... depression. So we do not say probably a month ago or a year ago, but the common thing is they have experienced postpartum depression for them to qualify uh, to be one of the respondents in the study. Uh -huh. So, madam, you have a follow-up question? <laughs> It is interesting to know that because it seems that they are telling you their experience in the past, but you are interviewing them right now about it. So uh, the, the issue there would be you are looking at their situation uh, after, no, no, before their current situation right now. You're not asking them of their current situation or condition. You ask them of their previous condition. That's, that's the... That's, yeah. that's the... Ah, yeah. We qualify ma'am sa postpartum depression nga ma sila six months to one year. Yeah. I, I understand uh -oh. that, that. That period should be considered, right? But what I'm saying is, your information that you have gathered is not actually the current condition, but rather it's their condition a month or previous months ago. Yeah. Within that 12 months, ma'am. Yeah. That's why my suggestion is you need to clarify that in yeah, your that, that is why I think that's, that's the reason why they are using phenomenology, because it's a live uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. Because, no, I, what I mean is, if it is a live experience, it should consider the current situation. But right now, they're, they're not, they're reporting the situation, a previous situation, but not the current one. Uh, but but the, the, there could be a limitations to that, because if they are still depressed, then the, the data could be uh, jeopardized probably. No, so but that, they could include that in their limitation. Yeah, probably. that's why there limitation should be of the a study. discussion on that because what you consider them to be not depressed anymore during the interview. Um, Any as, condition nila? As long as they, they fall within that six months to one year, ma'am. Uh, so but, some of them na relieved na, some of them are pagod within that six, within that one year. Kasi kung i-current naman nga within three months after 
within three months after sang iya nga pagbata, makonsidered pa na nga daw normal nga kwan nila. Nga reaction bala. Okay, so we have, uh, that's a follow-up question, madam, or additional information? Suggestion. Suggestion, okay. Uh, because it seems that uh, we are not in agreement with the use of the term uh, depression, because actually, as what uh, mentioned by the researcher, the depression that is referred to here is not the depression that we usually uh, know in psychology, but it is, it is uh, simply a feeling so the other, the other terms that usually you can find in the book is not depression, but rather postpartum blues that they have mentioned. But sometimes they call it uh, depression, but most often it is called postpartum blues. And uh, maybe for those who had experience to deliver the baby, especially during the first time, uh, we experience this. But most women can cope. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. It's mild. It's mild, but sometimes without the support group uh, to these mothers, the this will, you know, progress to uh, a psycho uh, a psychiatric problem. Yeah. Diba, Ma'am Lena? Okay. And uh, another regarding the question of Ma'am uh, Dr. Penetrante. Uh, I believe that since the study is phenomenology, you don't really have to consider that all these experiences are current. Because in phenomenology, we believe, uh, it is believed that all experiences are the same uh, despite it happened decade ago or uh, recently because the experience will rem remain your experience and regardless of time or period when it happened it is an experience that cannot be uh, altered by time uh, that is only my understanding of a phenomenological study Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you have a reaction, uh, madam? Yeah, that's true that you are, uh, what's this, analyzing the live experience. But I suggest that you need to clarify that in your document. Yes, ma'am. That it is not the current situation right now that you are recording because that is a different story yes ma'am because in. you're saying that previously they have mild depression but now they are no longer depressed mm -mm. you see there's an implication of that that you are recording the previous experience and not the time that you were interviewing them because there's an ethical consideration. Like, for example, if you have found out that there's a depression, being a medical or what, a health service provider, and you know that there are some uh, women who were diagnosed to have mild depression, so there's, there's an ethical consideration, whether to report or not to report, right? But what you are saying right now, it's not their current situation that you are reporting. It's their previous experience. And, and I think okay, you, you have we'll included in, that. No, you will include that we'll in your include report. That. Actually, that was the first question uh, Dr. Dosaran threw to us uh, during our presentation. How we will interview kung uh, uh, depressed sila at the moment. Or her so generally, your so generally, your respondents are already uh, well, well during the. Ready to answer, because if they're depressed, pa sila, it your might not be sufficient. Your data will be jeopardized. Uh -oh. Okay, and the common thing is, this uh, respondent should have experienced depression, uh -oh. no? Be it in the past or at the present. Otherwise, we will, will take that, ma'am, in our ano. Yeah. Thank Otherwise, you. you you will not be doing right, no, when uh, uh -uh. Uh, the respondent exactly. does not experience depression. Okay. Thank you. Are there other? Yes. Uh, well, you know, the deans and the directors are very active. No. 
Uh, this is just a point of clarification, of course, on the term depression as used in the title. Uh, depression, as it has been mentioned, is a medical term, which could not be changed, I believe, in terms of the real meaning of it, no? the universal meaning of it. So, uh, since they are all nurses, I believe, they have in them that meaning, maybe, uh, based on their, I don't know, operational definition, but since it is reflected in the title, uh, it is assumed that when you say postpartum depression with your participants, this has been diagnosed by medical doctors that they are actually on that particular stage before they have been used as a participants. So how, how did you make these things? Actually, happen? we include in our, uh, in our uh, literature undiagnosed, ma'am. Uh. Undiagnosed because they diagnosed once are those nga may severe kag-ara sa taken care by the doctor. So, we are only in the community level. Wala kami nagkuha sa severe okay. depression. So, so, maybe they have included that and their actually limitations, we are, uh, yeah. limitations of the study. That's why earlier I said uh, sometimes the postpartum depression is also uh, identified similar to postpartum blues in some authors. But uh, mom, postpartum I, blues is relatively uh, ano ni, a form of depression, mild depression. Uh, so maybe in their definition of term, they have clarified that, that depression uh, in this study refers to... Uh, if you have it mentioned, of course, undiagnosed... Undiagnosed. So in other words, that contradicts your title, which is depression. They have, uh, I, I recall that they have that instrument uh, for them to, uh, that could be, you know, that could be a limitation probably, you know, of this, uh, they, they, they just have the literature to back it up and then they have the, you know, they have the limitations to that. To because the it seems that it is very, very clear that the participants that has been used in this particular study has been diagnosed no, with depression based on the title. Ma'am, ma so you, you are recommending that we will change the word depression yes. to, the, to postpartum yes. blues? Yes. Postpartum right. blues? No, oh. postpartum experiences, I think, oh, would be the... Uh, when we say postpartum experiences, it will be so vague. Because postpartum uh, experiences could include pain, like that. It's a we. Okay. So are you done, uh, Madam, uh, yes. Madam Porras? Okay. So a follow up from the dean okay. of the art. So Center. since we are on a medical field and uh, nurses, as you are, we should accept that medical term. And this is a research. And we should correct everything. Now, postpartum experiences, so that we can include some of those uh, reflected in your result a while ago. Postpartum uh, experiences by adolescent mothers. Because once we have made that postpartum expression, that means they had already diagnosed by a medical or um, licensed individual that they Let's had... Let's hear the answer from, from the participants. Yes. Uh, from the presenters. So that is only a suggestion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Actually, okay. ma'am, not all those who experience depression are diagnosed medically because they did not see the, any doctor. They are, they are uh, taking care of lang by, ano, uh, that's... Uh, uh, to be safe instead because these are experience. undiagnosed. Oh, oh. I, I don't know if what could be the right term, but we will not use depression. Postpartum, sige ma'am, biro, that is already uh, uh, okay. conclusive. I, I remembered you have that, that instrument, was it DC5? DSM5. DSM5, and that DSM5 could, could, could detect the depression. All right, so they have an instrument. I think that was only symptoms, not the condition yet. So that means, ma'am, it's not yet conclusive that they are already depressed. I don't yes, know so we, we may hear the answer from the participants. Yes, ma'am. Uh -oh. Because if, although I mentioned earlier in some books, 
postpartum blues is similar to postpartum depression. There is some boundaries, ma'am. The normal postpartum blues only up to three months. Within three months. More than three months, it is already called depression. Okay, so, so you are backed up by literature. Okay. All right, so we have a follow-up from the director. Oh, you see the deans and the directors are very active, oh, dear students. You see how interesting research is? Okay. Uh, there's a lot of uh, controversy sa title, no? But siguro, uh, since this paper will be submitted to the URC, we will check the content, no? But right now, what we are hearing is, there are suggestions as to the title that instead of depression, you're suggesting experience. Some suggest blues, depression blues, no? But again, uh, because right now we are into a presentation, so maybe we can consider, maybe we can look at these suggestions. Yes, so I can I answer that, ma'am? Can I answer? Originally, our title was Postpartum Experiences kasi gusto naman makita tanang nga experiences sang teenage or adolescent mother. But during our pre-oral presentation, because nga very lapad ko no ang experiences ang postpartum, we should stick only to one la, um, uh, depression. Na. But originally, postpartum experiences, kay gusto naman makatch ang iban nga mga experiences tani sang adolescent mother. Ma-explore other than depression. Kaya damo-damo ila experiences other than depression. But during our pre-oral, amun ang gin-suggest ng panel. All right, so, and we have to respect the authority of the panel. All right, so, but of course, some of those suggestions could be used yeah, by our can... presenters to finally finalize no, their study um, because they have also their own limitations, the limitations to consider, no? And uh, they uh -huh. said experiences is too broad and they limit that. You know, when you do research, although you, you, you tend to measure no, all of those components, but remember, you have constraints, you have time constraints, no? So, that with that, they have uh, to consider the limitations, no? As well as the suggestions from the audience, all right? So, Thank you very much, ma'am, for the suggestion. We will take okay. care of that. So, you see, that's the we beauty of in. research, no? Sometimes, one expert will say it should be like this. Then another expert will say, no, it should be like this. And sometimes you will notice uh, it, you keep on changing and changing until later on you, uh, you, you, you do not know what to do next. No? All right. Kasi tama naman sila, sir. Originally, amo gidna gidman. Kay right. very broad daw. Yeah, so, so, limit. And we have to respect the, the, uh, ano, the panel no? who, who were also experts during that presentation. Okay? Shall we give a big, big hand to a very interesting presentation? Thank you. Led by Ma'am La Lamasan. Okay? So, to give our certificate of uh, appreciation. Okay? So, may I read the content of the certificate? So, another certificate with the same citation is awarded to our presenters, Professor, um, Professor Bautista, Professor Lamasan, and Professor Pinasso, uh, in grateful recognition for presenting their paper entitled Postpartum Depression as Experienced by Adolescent Mothers. Uh, during the 20th Faculty Research Symposium at Central Philippine University, Harrell City, Philippines. Now, given this 12th day of March 2019 at CPU, Ilulu City, Philippines. Signed by our Director for Research, Dr. Penetrante, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Irving Domingo Rio, and our beloved President, Dr. Teodoro Cirobles. Okay, so I would like to request our director to award the certificate of recognition. And the picture taking will follow. Okay, a big, big hand please once more to our presenters. Okay.
All right. Thank you very much. At this moment, uh, we knew that you did not you did not come up with that research without um, somebody, no, who helped you, no, in your uh, research adventure. So we would like to, as I call your group, no, the. I would like you to stand, and then somebody will come up and say your acknowledgments. No, your acknowledgments. We will give this time for you to say thank you to the people whom you owe uh, help, support. No, during the study. You know, dear students in the university, we are. We require our faculty. We are required as faculty to conduct research, and with this. Uh, research from the nursing faculty, I am very sure that there will be no problem anymore with your faculty you know, as to the number of research conducted because you have uh, already conducted a lot of this phenomenological study. And will you please give a big, big hand to your professors <laughs> no, for their efforts? So, College of Nursing will have no problem with the faculty involvement in uh, research. No? Yes, madam. May I'm back? Amuna, madam. Okay, please. Uh, at this point, I would like to thank all the faculty from the College of Nursing. Bisan ano sila kasako ang iba nagkatugid sa office kag nag ampo ng mam di lang kami yung magpresent pero ari sila gihapon. So really, thank you for your efforts and your uh, cooperation. We really need this because without you, our uh, center will not be successful. So thank you so much for your participation and cooperation. I hope to see more of your researches in the succeeding R&D week. So that means nakatoka na si College of Nursing nga sa subong pila anum no sa sunod nga tuig ten na kabilog. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Madam Director. So we will I will call it's now your turn to say thank you. I will call the um, title of the study. I will I will announce the title of the study then uh, we request the presenters to please stand wherever you are and there will be somebody who will say the acknowledgement. Okay, for the study, factors influencing the preference of clients of Kabalaka Reproductive Health Center as family planning service provider, application of the Q methodology, I would like to call Professor Rio, Professor Sally, and Professor Cello to please stand. No, they are the proponents of the study. And I would like to request one of them to say their thanks. Yeah, okay, okay. In behalf of my fellow investigators, um, I, would, I would like to thank, of course, our advisor for our research study, Dr. Cariel Joy Rio, for is introducing to us the Q methodology and our statistician from Manila. Then uh, we would like also to say thank you to Central Philippine University, to our president, to Dr. Rio for encouraging us to participate in the research. Also to our dean, Attorney Salex Alibugha. The, our, of course, our former dean, uh, Ma'am Lililin Visomo, she was the one who um, spared this <laughs> um, participation of all our um, faculty for this uh, research uh, endeavor, especially on conducting this qualitative study, phenomenology and uh, uh, Q method. And I would like also to say thank you to my fellow clinical instructors for your support in despite of of course of our very busy schedule you face the challenge to present here in front for our research and we say thank you also to the director of the URC Bausi Mam was so very patient for us 
when she is monitoring the the what do you call this the um, final report of our study how when are we going to submit but she's so patient for us so this time we are here so thank you dr penetrante and to all the members of the research committee of the university and we would like also to say thank you to dr sabihon for a very um, courteous and very a uh, good moderator with us and the uh, other members of the URC committee who are here right now Dr. Berlongan, Dr. West, Dr. Dusaran, our panel member during the pre-oral pre defense, Mom Guy who is also very patient with the College of Nursing researchers I have in behalf of the group sorry so thank you <laughs> Very well said. Please make. <laughs> Lastly, sir, the advisor of the five phenomenological study, Dr. Handa. Okay. And to the students, thank you for supporting your clinical instructors during their BCBC moments. <laughs> thank you, sir. Very well said. Please make your valedictory speech a little bit short. <laughs> All right. I would like to acknowledge also the second group. No, you know, I would like to acknowledge you for your effort. So, a phenomenological study on infant care among teenage mothers by Professor Boteros and Professor Solidad. Please stand. All right. Okay. There. Of course, your short uh, acknowledgement is also needed. Um. Can I hold on to my acknowledgement in our... <laughs> you may, you may say. Um, actually, most of the people mentioned were also part of our research, no? Uh, Dr. Handa, Dr. Carril Rio. But we would like to mention Dr. Perry Paul Espinosa and Dr. Irene Malaga. Most of you have known Paul also, so he was a big help. And... What else? Uh, we would like also to thank Professor Mel Basale for their constant reminder and for pushing us to finish the study. And last but not the least, our family who were our main support for the love and understanding. Very well said. Thank you. For the group, live clinical experiences of nursing students assigned in the intensive care unit by Professor Dosaran. Uh, Professor Lakson and Professor Sata. Please come up. Please stand. All right. So there they are, no? the three of them. Thank you. Please say oh, your sorry. thanks. <laughs> Sir Dusaran is listening. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would, like, uh, I would like to thank to our, our participants who are not here. They are already abroad. Those nurses na in interview namun, sir. And also to Dr. Handa for the um, introduction of this, uh, of this phenolo phenomenological uh, study. For Dr. Rio for, for facilitating how to conduct the study. For our dean, Ma'am Somo. For my co-researchers, um, Ma'am uh, Lakson and Ma'am Sata. They are very energetic. They are very techy, like that. And of course, for... Um, uh, our uh, advisors, uh, I mean, those who have mentored us, like Ma'am Yuro, and also the uh, Sir Alvin Gustilo, and for all the rest, nga wala ko na mention, thank you very much. How about family support? Family support from my yehe. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> Dr. Dusaran is recognized. Kaya doko doko sa program na, alright? Thank you, no, very well said. How about from the... A stranger within me. No? Very interesting topic, a lived experience of women on menopause by Professor Hilongos, Professor Hiron, and Professor Sampiano. Right, please make your valedictory speech short. May ano gid ako yako digo. Okay. We would like to thank the following uh, Dr. Handa, our, our advisor. And we also would like to acknowledge one of our colleagues. Mom Suerte, she was with us initially during the start of the um, this, uh, study. Um, we also would like to acknowledge and thank 
our respondents who are with us today. So, balaan nyo na kung sino to sila. Um, Sir Alvin, he has been a um, big help to us. Dr. Penetrante, uh, Mom Somo, who encouraged us to do the research study, and of course, Attorney Ali Boga. And um, we would also like to thank the support of our VPAA, Dr. Rio. Thank you. Very well said. Now we go to the second to the last. No, but of course, not the least, phenomenological study of caregiving to can, uh, cancer patients by Professor Britannia, Professor Del Socorro, Professor Gesto, and Professor Roblesa. Please stand, mga madams. <laughs> Please stand. There. No, so there we are. Then somebody will say their valedictory speech. Okay, so in behalf of my co-researcher, daw mi joka bug at ito sang investigator ng award, <laughs> co-researcher, so we would like also to thank uh, same people who have helped us, as mentioned a while ago, of course with our advisor, Dr. Handa, our uh, uh, dean, previous dean, uh, Lily Lee, Lily Lynn V. Somo, and then our current dean, Attorney Salix Alibugha, for all the support, the push, especially from Dr. Penetrante, no, grabe giving a support. Uh, Mamelba Sale also, thank you very much. Si Sir Alvin Gustillo, thank you also for helping Mam Britannia to finish everything. And uh, also to our participants, who are very willing to help us. So thank you so much. Balaan man nila kung sino na sila. So thank you so much. And of course, finally, we, wa we would like to thank God, our Creator, for giving us the physical, the mental, emotional support. Kasi siguro tanan man tag-agi man sina kay because of our very busy nga schedule. So thank you God Gid sa natapos naman biskan paano. Thank you so much. Very well said. Congratulations, madam. And of course, na the last but not the least, postpartum depression is experienced by adolescent mothers by Professor Bautista Lamasan and Professor Pinasso. So, okay. Madam Lamasan. Good morning, Lewat. Uh, we would like to thank the same people, man. But I would like to mention, bisan the same sila. Uh, of course, uh, during our pre-oral, Dr. Handas, our advisor, and our uh, other panelist, Dr. Fernandez, who is here. Dr. Dosaran, also, who is here. Uh, Dr. Honsai. Uh, and of course, uh, Dr. Rio, kay siya gidang initial nga nag-push amon sini to conduct the study for the College of Nursing. Nga sang una, zero kami ngayon, 100%. Okay. To our... Uy, a big, big hand for that, dear oh, students. Sa una, big, big zero hand. ang College of Nursing, 100%. 100% of your faculty. Oh, because of course, ni Dr. Rio. And our fellow faculty, nga kada isa sa amon, masig push ng kada isa nga study, sir. Sigihan na, sigihan na. Okay. So kada isa nag-support ang uh, fellow faculty naman sa College of Nursing. And also to uh, Doc, uh, Dina si Alvin. To Mr. Alvin Gustilo, although nga ginagamit naman ng HEC nurse uh, 14 steps sa amon nga study, Mr. Gustilo is very... Ano na? Oh, very efficient kagin pabaro yung kami sang iyang uh, Atlas TI kagin compare ang amon nga results sa manual nga hikners kag sa iyang uh, computerized kag siling nya daw the same kuno gawang result okay uh, and then we have uh, of course uh, to all the participants mga mga student namon nga nagasupport pa malak Pack don't encourage kita kami magambal. To mam Dr. Pinitranti for the guidance kag pushing man, mga pusher ni sila pusher, pusher kag sa mga insights kag suggestion yung ginhatag. Also with Dr. Borlongan and Dr. Poras, thank you sa mga insights. Down nag critical thinking kami di oras dito sa kapungko. 
na ako ng critical thinking na mo na develop pag dito na enhance I mean na enhance okay and of course uh, to our families okay sa ko researcher ko gali kay ma'am pinaso ka kay ma'am uh, bautista it was really a hard time for us doing this research kasi at first Zero interest ni kami ma'am sa research because of the difficulty nga nabalaan namon. Gayang courage kami sa student from faculty mismo, nabudlayan man. Kapin pa kung mang lakas ka sa gapon ng imo nga, nga, nga participants, kundi ang mga balay nila sa kalapad-lapad sa amon nga barangay nga ginkantuan. Gatagiti pang init. Thank you sa akon mga co-researcher da. And of course, uh, may nabilin pa? To God Almighty, kay nothing is possible kung without God. Nothing is impossible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lamasa. Now you know, dear students, the secret, one of the secrets of your professors, no? The, why nursing, the nursing group always uh, wanted to be the first, no? So they have God, no? They acknowledge God as their helper, Okay. So before Dr. West, we will request Dr. West to close us with a prayer. But to document you know, what we have today, I would like to request our presenters with Ma'am Burlungan, Sir Dusaran, Ma'am Dr. Penetrante to have a, a picture evidence you know, that you have presented your research today. So Sir Dusaran, please, Dr. West, Dr. Burlungan, please be with uh, this group no, of researchers. Investigators. Okay. So documentary evidence. You may submit this to the the link. No, we would like to request uh, Dr. Penetrante, Dr. West, Dr. Bulungan, please. Dr. Bulungan, you take the the seats. Dr. West, Dr. Dosaran already is there. Shall we all rise for the closing prayer with Dr. West? Just stand wherever you are. Let's pray. Father, we're indeed grateful for the blessings of life that you bestow upon us. We're thankful for these presentations and the presenters. I pray, Lord, that you would cause the truth of their research to resonate with us, cause us to be better people because of it. Lord, we look for your truth in guiding us all the days of our lives. Now dismiss us with your blessing as we go our separate ways. I pray that you would lead, guide, and direct us. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. West. Thank you. So, Ma'am Penetranti has said the her thank you, her acknowledgement. Thank you very much for that fruitful uh, research presentation. Congratulations, College of Nursing Faculty. Job very well done. Thank you.